God bless you all and welcome to today's class. Uh, we are going to have our Sabbath teaching now. Dios le bendiga a todos. Bienvenido a nuestra clase de hoy. Vamos a comenzar nuestra enseñanza en uh, el sábado. Um, y hoy la enseñanza centra sobre los hebreos o los raíces hebreas. Eh, un movimiento eh, que existe y... El título dice que es tan correcto, que son, es un movimiento basado en una un declaración que es eh, correcto, es real. Y entonces, pero vamos a ver por la escritura, no por mi opinión, sino la escritura, eh, eh, que como en sus conclusiones eh, se equivocan. Esto va a ser algo bien eh, detallado y cuidadoso. So, eh, espero que pongan atención y que tengan sus lápices y seguimos. So, today's lesson is going to be speaking about the Hebrew Roots Movement. It's a, a movement that has a, a few statements and we're going to consider the veracity, the truthfulness of their claims, okay, which I am already stating from the get-go that they are right, okay, and in their basic claim. However, in their conclusions, I am going to show you in through scripture, not my opinion, but through the scripture itself, the weight of scripture, that their conclusions are demonstrably wrong, okay, so you're going to see that in the Bible. And um, so be, take your notes, get, sit down, get yourself some coffee, whatever, especially if you're a Hebrew roots a believer, <laughs> get something strong. <clears throat> I am drinking water. Okay, <clears throat> so let us continue with our class today. Vamos a entrar en nuestra clase. All right, so today... Um, We're going to start from, I've always done this, this is one of the rules I always have in terms of hermeneutics, is we have to start at the beginning. Vamos a empezar en, comenzar en el principio. Es una de mis leyes de hermenéutica. Se empieza en el principio para poner las cosas en orden. So we have to go from the beginning so that we can put things in their proper perspective. En su perspectiva, correcto, como Jehová lo puso. The way Jehovah has placed it in Scripture. We're not going to go skip and jump or start someplace else. We're going to start at the beginning. What is the first thing that God teaches us in the Bible? ¿Qué es lo primero que Dios puso en la Biblia que nos enseña? ¿Qué es lo que Dios nos está enseñando? So heavy, there's a heavy impetus here to look into Genesis chapter 1 to see the foundation of everything else that happens later, okay? So todo lo demás que sucede después, pues está basado en Genesis 1 y 2 y 3, etc. Okay, so that's the first thing we have, we're going to look at today. And, and remember that when you're, when you're studying, when you're looking at something, you're doing research, is what we're going to be doing now. Cuando tú estás estudiando algo, estás inquiriendo, estás eh, en la búsqueda de, de información, de verdades, eh, tienes que saber que las cosas primeras son primero. No, so, no se puede considerar cosas después sin... Eh, recordarle o recordarse de lo primero. It's very, you know, we're talking about God, complexities, histories, right? And you have to understand that these things need the foundational things to be established first. So first things, the Bible says it itself, first things are first. So let us not forget the first things because once you... If you divorce the later things from the first things, then you lose all frame the framework that God established so that you don't lose control. You don't lose focus of or the thread of what the truth is. 
Así que puso las cosas a Dios primero para que no perdamos, para que no perdamos el hilo de lo que es la verdad o no. So, no se puede estar estudiando cosas después en la Biblia sin la consideración y eso, o, o tener presente en cualquier momento lo primero establecido. So we cannot develop doctrines in, in scripture later on, from late verses later on, without having present, having a harmony and foundationally the first things that God said and taught. Okay, so we see this a lot. I've taught a lot about deception. And again, forgetting the first things is always the first step in any good deception of any scripture. Because it's, it, you'll find that erroneous teaching, erroneous ideation, always, for, always forgets to mention, forgets to check the math with the first things. Siempre la, las ideas de decepciones, yo he hecho videos sobre decepción, lo que es. <coughs> Siempre se utiliza el olvidarse o no incluir las cosas primeras cuando se está considerando los asuntos y eso es parte, eso es número uno so, usted para verificar las cosas tiene que ver las primeras cosas que están de acuerdo no que se no se menciona porque estamos por acá no tiene que ver cositas así <laughs> tiene mucho que ver all right so you know you have these teachings that come out that completely uh, obfuscate the first things that happen in the Bible and they need to do it because the, their belief system does not have harmony with what God first said and what God first did. And that's the sure tell sign that those belief systems are erroneous. They're false. Okay, God knows what to do. He knows how to write a book. God knows. God is all powerful. Dios es todo poderoso. And this goes also to the argumentation that uh, a lot of people may have who study the scriptures, history, uh, sources for scriptural uh, veracity. All of those things. And all of those things and whatever you find, inconsistencies and reasons to doubt that the Bible is the Word of God. You're, you're forgetting the main idea. And what is it? That God is in control of all things. So that the Bible is what God wants it to be today. The way it is. La Biblia es como Dios lo quiso que fuese hoy día, para hoy día, lo que hay. And always, and it will be that way always, God is hidden. Siempre Dios es escondido. O sea que Dios es invisible. God is invisible. So no matter how much uh, magnifying and magnification you're going to put on your magnifying glass to check out every little dot and every little detail in Scripture, The more you do that, the more you will have reasons not to believe or reasons to be deceived. Lo más que tú mira y busca en lo físico, y eso incluye la palabra de Dios, la, la historia y, y lo, los, eh, las fuentes de lo original y la historia y todas estas cositas, que hay gente que estudia en estas cosas, pero lo más y más que tú busques en esas cosas, en lo físico, más invisible se hace Dios. Usted no te entiende lo que es que Dios es invisible, que Dios creó, en el principio creó Dios los cielos y la tierra. No, no que en el principio estaba Dios y los cielos y la tierra. No dice así la escritura. You know, the Bible doesn't say that in the beginning was God and the heavens and the earth. 
for you to be nitpicking on physical things, the physical realities of the scripture, to see and focus and, and see its contrasting points and its physical uh, characteristics that negate, that block, that, 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 that disprove even God's own existence and the, and the veracity of the scripture. Like an idiot. Because it, the Bible doesn't say in the beginning God was and so was the heavens and the earth. To then say, well, if this is the word of God, it, it has to you know, fit a certain... Uh, truth meter that we can make tests and observe and hey, hey, hey this is this is the word of God. It, the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That means that everything in the heavens and the earth, including the words that we speak and write, that the Bible is written with and the way it got there, is not in the domain of God. In other words, uh, that's misspoken. Again, the problem with words. Meaning that this is our domain. These words are our words. The inconsistencies that you're bound to see are ours. It's a mirror. You will, you will seeing ourselves. You're looking at our own weaknesses and our own uh, failures. That's what you're going to see when, if you do a careful, scientific, uh, you know, a professional, academic research and study of the written word. You're going to find problems. Like in every other physical thing, you're not going to see God. Usted no va a ver a Dios. Usted va a ver palabra de hombre. You're going to see words of men and histories of men and the limitations of man. That's what you will see. There's not limitations of God. You're only looking at limitations of men. Of course, the conclusion is that God doesn't exist because of that, right? Because of God's word. Entonces la conclusión es usted que va a ver cuando está viendo palabras de hombre. Usted va a ver las limitaciones de hombre. Las debilidades del hombre. La fisicalidad. Las cosas reales de la fisicalidad que son limitadas. No son perfectas. Eso es lo que tú vas a ver. So, you know, it's, so it's like in the temple, when you read the scripture, scripture gives you hints, it tells you things, you got to educate yourself. When, the, uh, when Israel built the, temp, the tabernacle, right, God told them you have to build it with all these curtains, all these curtains, and especially one dividing eyesight from the Holy of Holies, right? Where, where the presence of God would come down into that room was cut off from view by curtain. Why? Because it wasn't for men to see God. Man wasn't supposed to see God. If you see God, you die. All you can see was the curtain. That's all you were allowed to see. And all of Israel, what were they allowed to see? The curtains of the tabernacle. Así que Israel, cuando se construyó el tabernáculo, fue cubierto el tabernáculo con eh, cortinas, cortinas. ¿Qué uso tienen las cortinas? Es para bloquear la visión, que uno no vea. La, lo claramente lo que está sucediendo adentro, la realidad, la verdad, que no se vea. ¿Qué es lo que Dios está diciendo con un, un tabernáculo que no se puede ver? Lo de adentro, donde supuestamente estaba la Shekinah de Jehová, se veía desde afuera. 
pero cuando entraba en el santo de, san, de los santos, ese lugar, el santuario, no nadie lo podía ver. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué es lo que Dios está diciendo? Si llegaran los científicos de ahí, ¿qué, qué viese? If scientists would, would gather around the tabernacle in the day, what would they see? Curtains. Are you guys serving a God here? All we see is curtains. Look, we're going to look very detailed. Let's, let's study this in great detail. You can go and pull the fibers apart in great detail and trace where those fibers came from. And you say, you know, what are you talking about God? There's just curtains here. See that? It, this is the reality of the scriptures as well. This is, you know, we're seeing in man's words here, words. So the more you look, the more you will end up with physical re reality. Lo más que tú busca la cortina, solo va a encontrar cortina. Porque el poder y la realidad y la verdad del tabernáculo no eran las cortinas. Santo es el Señor. <laughs> the reality, the truth, and the power of the tabernacle wasn't in the, in the curtains. It was not in the curtains. Simple. But again, you have people who, who, who dedicate their lives and other people who depend, uh, you know, in their thinking based on what these people who are just studying the curtain say. Because they're the experts. Entonces, eh, hay gente que vive en que su profesión es estudiar las cortinas. Y otra gente que solamente creen, dependen lo que dicen estos expertos en lo que dicen, en su opinión, opinión del hombre. Eso es la realidad. So you, you have to make a decision. Are you going to look for the curtains? Or are you looking for the, the presence of God behind the curtain? That's the decision you have to make. And everyone has to make. When you come to the Word of God, you have to make the decision. You're going to focus on what men have said and done and and what re, me, human research tells you or are you going to believe in the God who created Adam and Eve in the God who, who created the universe in the God that was at the beginning who created the heavens and the earth así que tú tienes que decidir si tú vas a creer a Dios o creer en, en la realidad física. Porque si tú vas a creer eh, en la realidad física más que a Dios, la declaración de Dios, entonces solo vas a tener la realidad física. Pero la realidad física no salva a nadie, no da vida a nadie. Es solamente es, termina en qué? En muerte. Punto. So, what is the end to the physical reality? Death. And that's all you have. Because you're looking at the physical reality for your beliefs. For what you're going, how you're going to walk every day. But the Bible tells me that the just walk by faith, not by sight. Pero mi palabra dice a mí que los justos viven por la fe y caminan por fe, no por vista. ¿Sí? And so the, these are the things that you have to take care about. You have to really, if you go to scripture and you're not careful with understanding the scripture from the very first verse, you will be deceived. You simply are a victim of physical realities. And no matter how much time I'm spending here every week telling you to wake up, you're, you're sleeping, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, you, you're not going to listen because you simply insist on going by what you see. 
instead of what the truth is. The truth is not what you see. It is behind the curtain. That's what the truth is. And that's where it is. And for that, you can only assess it by faith, not by sight. So research or faith. I choose faith. Así que si quieres investigar y hacer mucha investigación, uh, solo puede investigar lo que se ve y lo que se ve no es fe. Y tiene que escoger. Para Dios y para vivir en Dios tiene que escoger la fe, no en la vista. So usted tiene que escoger cual, qué quieres hacer. Yo solo sé que lo que se da por la vista termina en muerte. Y la fe, el justo por la fe vivirá. The just shall live by faith. That's where the just's life comes from. That's the, that, that's the end of a just's life. Eternal life. That will be the end of it. But if you're going to look at with your eyes, if you're going to do your uh, physical research, you're going to end up dead. Right? Because that's the end of everything that's physical. Oh, well, uh, Christians die too. And we, hello? Duh. But after the curtain is over, behind the curtain, ah, that's the determining factor. Así que eh, dicen que los cristianos se mueren también, todos nos vamos a morir, pues seguro. Pero es lo que viene después de la cortina, mismo. Eso, eso es lo que yo estoy hablando. Los que viven su vida de acuerdo a la cortina, cuando se terminó la cortina, se terminó. Solamente los que saben lo que hay detrás de la cortina son los que viven allí y vivirán después de la cortina. Porque tienen entrada después de la cortina. They know what's happening behind the curtain because the only one who could go behind the curtain was the only one that was cleaned from their sin to enter and minister behind the curtain. See? And so when the curtain, when everyone else has to stop at the curtain, that is the end, that one goes through to the other side and lives, exists on the other side of the curtain. That's the difference between those who believe by faith and those that don't. Okay, so that's the intro, expansive intro for this teaching today. So eso es la entrada... Um, la introducción a esta enseñanza de hoy. So, going to the beginning. Now that we have established that, let us go to the beginning. Vamos a ir al principio. Porque antes de saber lo de los hebreos, los raíces hebreas, hay que saber el principio. So, los raíces del mundo. So before we go to Hebrew roots, we need to go to the roots of everybody on the earth. Okay? Everyone. Uh, you guys may be experiencing some issues on uh, HAPS because of my, my screen connection, the connection's lost there. Uh, so again, that is something with uh, HAPS. You see, I can't, nothing, nothing's wrong with my internet connection. Because everything else is green here. OBS is saying good, buddy. Everything else is okay. But Haps is having some issues. Okay, so we'll leave it that the way it is. Now, let us go into the scripture. Now we're back on Haps, you know, so again. Uh, let's go into the scripture here. And let's go to the beginning. Before the Hebrew roots. Because we need to know what the truth is. So let us go before the Hebrew roots. Let me make sure um, we're getting what we're supposed to have here. One moment. And uh, what is that? Let's uh, 
Sorry, last thing. So let's go. Okay. Hold on for a moment, folks. Let me just update your update the page for you here. Alrighty. Okay, so everybody should be seeing the Bible that I have here, Bible Gateway, a wonderful resource. Go and donate to them. Okay, Genesis 1. Uh, again, why did God put Genesis 1 in Genesis 1? ¿Por qué Dios puso Genesis 1 en Genesis 1? ¿Por qué no empezó Dios? The first question you got to ask yourself is why didn't God first start all of nature, all of creation? Why didn't he first start with declaring? Come on now, listen up now. Declaring the Ten Commandments. Come on. Come on. Ok, vamos, vamos a hablar. ¿Por qué Dios no empezó Génesis 1, los diez mandamientos? Vamos a hablar. <laughs> vamos a hablar aquí. Vamos, vamos a tener lógica. Let's have logic here, ok? Why didn't God, because, por, la, la, y la razón que digo eso es porque la, 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 los, los raíces hebreos y los adventistas, ok, ponen tanta énfasis en la ley, más énfasis que Génesis 1, seguro, en la ley es lo más importante, the, the law is the most important thing for these two groups. Adventists and the Hebrew roots people, okay? So, listen, you go by the weight of the argument. The, the weight is that the law is more important than anything else. That, that from the beginning, the law was there from the beginning. But the, the problem here is that, where is it? La ley era tan importante que la ley siempre estuvo desde el principio, dicen. Entonces mi pregunta es sencillo, ¿dónde está? ¿Sí? This, this is, I'm showing you the inconsistency in thinking. The thinking is inconsistent with the scripture. El, los pensamientos, la, la doctrina es inconsistente con la escritura. Eso es lo que te estoy enseñando. Simply that if you think according to the scripture, en armonía con la escritura, si tú pensara, usted nunca podía poner tanta énfasis como lo ponen sobre la ley. You would never have come to this overwhelming emphasis on the law by thinking according to scripture because God's emphasis in Genesis 1 is not the law porque el énfasis de Dios en Genesis 1 no es la ley y es lo, lo el primero you know listen when something is very important to be taught bueno, algo es tan importante eh, para enseñarlo. Se, se habla primero. Esto es lo primordial. Primordial. Pri. Primero. Prioridad. Priority. Pri. And primordial. Primordial. These things have... In the, the PRI means that these things are first, they're foremost. But if something is first and foremost, then it should be first and foremost. Si algo es primero y primordial, debe ser primero y primordial. Esto es la palabra de Dios. This is the word of God. And two reasons, it, because it doesn't make a difference for the story of God's creation to put first the law of God. No tiene nada que ver, nada, de, ningún diferencia hace que lo primero se pone aquí. La ley de Dios no, no interfiere con nada, pero establece. 
So it doesn't interfere with anything putting the Ten Commandments here, but it establishes. Simple. It establishes. And number two, it would eliminate any argument that God, God would know later on there's going to be a question because I know that that, that that Pastor Rosado later on is going to be questioning this. See, God would know that. He knew that. He knew I would do this. <laughs> eh, Dios sabía que ese Pastor Rosado por ahí iba a hacer esta inqu inquisición aquí. <laughs> iba a inquirir en este punto. Y en realidad no, no tiene... No es impactante eh, de, o, o negativo el poner aquí los diez mandamientos porque establece la importancia de la ley que Jehová quiere y entonces hace callar ese reverendo Gilberto Rosado. ¿Sí? Y, y si quiero salvar a Gilberto Rosado, por eso por amor, a, a, por lo menos a él. Porque los demás entienden, pero él no entiende, él no tiene la capacidad. Pues entonces ya, pues como no hace ningún daño. You know, it, does, it doesn't harm anyone. I mean, those who believe that you have to, to follow the Ten Commandments, that the, the law of God is the most important thing in, in the scripture and, and in all history, it doesn't damage your belief that it's the first thing in the Bible, right? You all agree with me. It would even be a bigger boost. Even I would have to accept it. Aún yo tuviese que aceptarlo. So what is the harm? If indeed, you know, what is the harm? Having the Ten Commandments first. That way everything the Adventist says is right. And that way everything the Hebrew roots say is right. Así que los Adventistas estuvieran correctamente... Y los raíces hebreos correctamente. Y Gilberto Rosado y los demás que piensan como él. Claramente equivocados. Sí, I, yo no tengo problema con eso. Sí, I don't have a problem with that. You know, being proven wrong. Yo no tengo problema que me enseñen que estoy mal. Okay. El problema aquí es que no estoy. <laughs> That's it. Es sencillamente que de, de, I'm not wrong here. That's all. That's the only problem here. Because I don't have a problem with being wrong, but you have to show me that I am. Right now, I'm teaching what God says here. And it's God did not put a priority on his law here. So Dios no puso prioridad aquí. What is it that he's placing a priority on? ¿Qué es lo que está poniendo prioridad? In the reality. En la realidad. And what is that reality? And I'm going to show you how all the Hebrew roots, Adventists, and, and a lot of others completely go off the scripture here. Because this is what God did. Instead of putting his law first, he put the truth first. En vez de poner la ley primero, él puso la verdad primero. See? Which he felt is more important to establish the basis for truth. So that people can do what? Dios preferió establecer lo que era la verdad primero. Para que la gente pueda hacer qué cosa? Conocer la verdad. Y la verdad os hará libre. You see that? So the most important thing for God was to establish the truth because as Yeshua said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That was the most important thing for God. And so God, because he's not saving just Israel here, obviously not. He's dealing with the whole earth. He informs the whole earth that in the beginning, God created 
the heavens and the earth. Está diciendo que en el principio, avisando a todo el mundo, que en el principio Dios creó los cielos y la tierra. Si Dios estaba interesado solamente en salvar a Israel, no era importante eso. Lo importante eran los diez mandamientos. Primero. You know, if God was just saving Israel, then the first thing would have been just the Ten Commandments. The first thing, right off the bat. Because that's the sign. And, and the Sabbath, first thing. Because that's the sign. Porque el, el Shabbat también lo primero, porque ese, eso es el señal. It's the most important thing. But we see that he does not. He makes a declaration that applies to the whole world, to everyone in the world. And he's making a scientific declaration. He's saying, you can, cannot find me in the reality around you. Why? Because I am not part of it. I created it. I am without it, meaning outside of it. Okay. Entonces, lo que Dios está diciendo aquí, está hablando a toda la humanidad que tu ciencia no me va a encontrar porque yo no soy parte de su ciencia. Yo no soy parte de su realidad. Yo creé su realidad. Yo soy el creador de su realidad. Así que todo lo que tú puedes hacer para buscar, 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 no va a hallar a mí allí. So no matter how much you look and how much you magnify, you will not see God in our reality. Because God created it. He is not part of it. He created it. We created TVs. We're not part of the TV. I'm looking at it. You're watching your computer. Created by man. You're not part of your computer. You are looking at it. You're outside of it. There is no evidence of you in it. There may be something that looks like you. You can have a, a picture. But that, that's not you, right? It's a representation of you. It's an idea of you. It's a concept of you. That could be found in the heavens and the earth, a representation of God. Even he says, it, let us make man in our image. Click, photo, image time, picture, let's go. Vamos a hacer foto. Vamos a hacer al hombre en nuestra imagen. Funny picture. <laughs> See, God made his image and likeness. He called him you. <laughs> You're God's funny face. Tú y yo somos el, el, el foto de Dios, el, el, lo, comi, lo cómico. By the way, esto es de uno de mis animales que no, yo tenía que darle medicina y no quería. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is, I'm pointing out to the scratch you may see on your screens. It's from one of the, the animals that I take care of. Um, I was giving them some medicine. You have to, you know, follow up with some medicine. And um, it, it didn't like the medicine, doesn't like to be, uh, to be still for the medicine. So, it, it, you know, and they get scared. It's not, they're not angry or anything. They're just they're scared out of their wits. So I suffered a little scratch here because that's our reality. Porque esa es nuestra realidad, eh, que el animal se asusta, you know, te, 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 te se asusta y no sabe lo que está pasando. But, and, that, and I'm real, and it's real, right? Can you imagine with dealing with God that you don't see? It's invisible, it's outside of our reality. Come on, it's frightening. So, estas son cosas muy eh, eh, asustantes. Porque, eh, you know, eh, aún entre las cosas que conocemos, las cosas que son reales, nos asustamos. Los animales se asustan de uno. Y nosotros somos hueso y carne, sangre y carne, ¿no? Y Dios, imagínense el concepto de Dios, la presencia de Dios. ¿Qué, qué es lo que vamos a decir de eso? You know, how, how are we going to, then, if, if we get frightened and animals get frightened of us and we're frightened of things that, eat, that we know exist, How do you think it's going to be with, with an invisible God? This is very, it's frightening. It's frightening beyond your, your level to maintain your wits about you. So we talk about very serious things here. 
uh, and God is dealing with those very, very serious points that people need to get straight. Y Dios está pregando con esos puntos que tienen que tomar en cuenta. Okay? So, again, why did God put this first? Because this is the first thing you need to get straight. Before you begin to believe in Hebrew roots and seven-day Adventism and whatever religion or even atheism, you need to first deal with what God is saying first. Everybody. Así que todo el mundo tiene que bregar primero antes de ser adventista, antes de ser eh, raíces hebreas, antes de, de, de cualquier religión por ahí, aún siendo uh, para ser ateo, lo primero que Dios está diciendo, tú tienes que bregar con eso. Everybody. Because no one has an excuse. The first thing wasn't God's law. The first thing was God's truth. Lo primero no era la ley de Dios, sino lo primero era la verdad de Dios. Que en el principio creó Dios, ¿qué quiere decir? Que ya existía Dios. Que Dios no es algo, no es parte de lo físico, de nuestra realidad, lo que nosotros llamamos real. So the atheist is right. Not because they understand, but in their ignorance, they are correct in saying that God is not real. Because literally, you are right. <laughs> God is not real because he is not part of the heaven and earth. That's what we call real. That's our definition of reality. Los ateos dicen algo que es verdad, aunque ellos no entienden lo que están diciendo. Again, we're going to teach them what, they, what they're saying is true, but they don't understand. The same thing with the Hebrew roots and everyone else. You're saying things that are true, but you're not understanding what you're saying. Simply. Eh, eh, como los hebreos raíces y los adventistas dicen cosas que son verdades, pero no entienden lo que están diciendo. Ok, eso lo voy a enseñar. Aquí está. Los ateos dicen que Dios no es real y están correctos. Porque la realidad, nuestra definición de cosas reales que existen son cosas de los cielos y de la tierra. Si no son de los cielos y de la tierra, no existen. No son, de la, no son reales. Pero fíjese que Dios dice que en el principio creó Dios. Ya, ya estaba Dios. Cuando creó Dios los cielos y, lo, y la tierra, la realidad. So, si Dios creó la realidad, ¿cómo puede ser el real? You know, if God created the reality, what we define as reality... ¿Cómo puede ser Dios real? Y él tendrá que estar aquí dentro. Originalmente. Y eso no es la verdad. Porque él es el creador de lo que nosotros llamamos la realidad. Because God is the creator of what we call reality. He cannot be then real. Not to us. Not within our standards of reality. And that is what God says first. First thing out of his mouth. First thing in Torah. First thing in the Bible. So the atheistic argumentations are all based on ignoring the first verse of the Bible. There's really no need to be argument, uh, having apologetical arguments with atheists. And the atheist claims are also nonsensical Uh, in light of the first declaration. They'll tell you everything in the Bible uh, and how it contradicts and this and that, blah, blah. But the first line in the Bible negates the very ideation of atheism. Your basic principle is negated on the first verse of the Bible. Simply, uh, there needs to be no argumentation more than considering the ramifications of the first, the very first utterance of God in, in the scripture, which is in the beginning, God created 
the heavens and the earth. And there needs to be no further argumentation, verses, or anything else needed. Deal with it. Before you can continue, give us a, a validation of the right to be an atheist after verse 1. Because if you don't give if you don't provide validation for your right to be an atheist with upon verse one, then there's nothing more to talk about. You simply have not passed the test to be a true atheist. Absolutely. Wait till they I haven't put that up yet because I, I don't want to step on all their toes all at once. But that'll make them so angry and pissed off. <risa> Esto va a enfurecer a los ateos mucho. Uh, yo le doy batiza con otras cosas y texto y muchas cosas. Pero esto sí es, this one, esto lo, lo elimina porque no son calificados. Aunque eso siempre le ha dicho. Siempre ha dicho a los ateos: aquí no hay verdadero ateo. Yo todavía estoy buscando un verdadero ateo. I haven't found a true atheist yet. And I always throw that at them. They don't know what I'm talking about, right? Because they all say they're self-professed atheists. But in their argumentation, I do I don't find any. Not because of this, but because they're not uh, they're not really dealing with the issue of atheism. Truly, they're just pointing out at things they don't understand in the Bible, and people have misquoted and miscomprehended for ages, and that's the basis of their atheists. They're basically. They're atheists because of the errors of human understanding, which doesn't make them true atheists. An atheist it negates the existence of God, not based on human failure, but based on the facts. And so that's what they're lacking. They're not dealing. So that's why they can't go beyond this first verse of the Bible. But we're not here to talk about atheists today. This topic is about the Hebrew roots, right? Así que nosotros no estamos aquí para hablar de los ateos hoy, estamos hablando de los raíces hebreas. And the things that I, I'm, la razón que estoy enfocando en este, este tema, el primer verso, es para que tú veas la prioridad que Dios da en caracterizar, es que es muy importante, porque esto sí impacta a los raíces hebreas, para caracterizar, la naturaleza de lo que de todo lo que viene después en la Biblia so the problem here for the Hebrew roots particularly is that God is characterizing with the first verse he is characterizing the rest of the scripture okay again because many uh, Hebrew roots uh, Yeah, yeah, many of the Hebrew roots doctrine, or at least one of the apologetics of it, refuses, just like the Jewish religion does uh, now, because at certain times they were uh, a receptive to, comma, sorry, I'm using those grammatical uh, tools. Those who know English know what I'm meaning. That's I'm being very careful with that. Two, spiritual understanding of the scripture. Los hebreos, los raíces hebreos, como también los judíos, rechazan la consideración espiritual de la escritura. Pero ¿cómo pueden rechazarlo si Dios mismo en el verso 1, el primer verso de Torah, dice que Él es espiritual, está infiriendo, yo no soy de, la, de lo físico. Así que el argumento que tiran siempre los hebreos raíces y los judíos es que no se puede espiritualizar las escrituras y el primer verso de la Biblia está diciendo que Dios no es parte de lo físico que es lo que los hebreos raíces y los judíos quieren enfatizar 
y dicen que esa es la manera de interpretar la escritura físicamente en, en la realidad humana. So they are focusing on the physical human realities, the Hebrew roots and the Jewish um, the faith, and rejecting the spiritual understanding of scripture. Yet the Torah begins by declaring that the truth, the original, the origination of everything physical is spiritual, is God. The ideation that you are to, supposed to, so the first argument that I'm making here is actually an argument against the physical dependencies of the interpretation of Torah by the Jews and by the Hebrew roots or anyone else considering Torah and only taking it as a physical volume. In other words, that the instructions of Torah are only to be interpreted physically as in obeisance. First verse of the Bible tells you that there is something wrong with that. Simply, God is not physical. And if the obeisance of Torah, it, it cements our physicality, then it also should bring you a question to that. Si la obediencia a Torah enfoca en lo físico, debe de hacer una pregunta. Es un forma la interrogación. Porque Dios no es físico. Dios es espiritual. So even when ellos están denunciando los que hablan espiritualmente, they denounce the spiritual interpreters of Torah, and it's almost like talking against God. It, it, it suena como si estuviesen hablando en contra de Dios, porque Dios es espiritual. Dios es espíritu. Y solamente porque entienden las cosas físicas, en lo físico, es que rechazan la noción de que la Escritura puede verse en la forma que Dios lo expresó. Porque Dios, es, ¿qué crees tú? ¿Que Dios se expresó, lo expresó físicamente o espiritualmente? ¿De dónde se origina la palabra de Dios? Where does the origination, what character, what nature is the origination of the word of God? Is it in physical nature or is it in spiritual nature? And what is the end purpose of God? Is it physical conclusions or would it be spiritual conclusions? Así que, ¿cuál es la terminación también, el ende, la meta? de Dios es el, el, el ende físico o es un ende espiritual es una meta física metafísica <laughs> o es una meta espiritual ok y, y a fin ¿Cuál, se, se, ¿Cuál es la intención de, de Torah? ¿Hacerte mejores humanos? ¿O hacerse criaturas de Dios? ¿Pueblo de Dios? ¿Hijos de Dios? ¿Hijos de Dios? So, what is the goal of Scripture then? Is it to make us better humans? Or is it to make us um, uh, better uh, servants of God, um, uh, believers in God, the people of God, nation of God, the chosen of God, the children of God? And it's interesting, then when you look at The end, the goal of these religions is interesting to know 
Because what is the stated goal of the faith that they are espousing? It be it Jewish faith, be it the Hebrew roots faith, be it uh, the Seventh Day Adventist faith. Okay. What is the end result of all of this mess, of all of the religious belief, their particular ones? And you will find that they mainly lean on human existence. That the, at the end of the line, they will live like human beings on a new earth. A new heaven, a new earth. And they will be humans living, you know, eternally, you know, in that state, in a human state. That This is where they tend to lean towards in their belief system, see? And what I'm indicating to you, that is happens... Because they ignore this first thing here. This is where it starts. If you start wrong, you end wrong. Si tú empiezas mal, tú terminas mal. Y como empiezan con esta equivocación en el principio, ignorando este principio, ellos terminan mal. Porque no entienden que las cosas... Físicas son temporarias, no son eternas. They're ignoring the fact that the cre that the created things are temporary, especially the physical ones. These are physical or temporal. God talks about eternity, eternal things have nothing to do with physical things. Dios habla en la vida de cosas de la eternidad, de eternalidad. Y eternalidad no tiene que ver con las cosas físicas. <coughs> so, if you, if, if you were able to stay up with what I'm speaking here, what, what the scripture is inferring, what it's stating, by the first declaration, you got, you'll understand that any idea, any concept that says that we're not supposed to take the scripture spiritually is nonsense. Así que cualquier dicho que dice o, o, o frase para defender su ideología que dice que no estamos supuestos a espiritualizar la escritura es falso. Es falso. It cannot be accepted. Because God is spirit. That's it. You know, and I tell them, I repeat it to them, and they just don't listen. They're hard-headed. Esa es la cabeza duro que tienen, porque no oyen. Quieren ignorar. They have to. They have to ignore it. Because there is no defense of it in Scripture. They cannot come to you and defend the physicalness of, of their belief. They just simply, the only defense of it is ignoring Genesis 1.1. That's the only defense of it. Ignoring signs, ignoring knowledge, God, ignoring the heavens and earth in order to believe whatever they want to believe. Es ignorando los cielos y la tierra para que ellos crean lo que quieren creer. Porque el primer verso en la Biblia o, o, lo, lo elimina. Ese pensamiento, esa idea de que no se espiritualiza la escritura. As a matter of fact, en Israel se hacía, en la historia de Israel, en el principio se espiritualizaba la escritura. Okay? They just eliminated that over time. Ellos lo eliminaron sobre tiempo. ¿Por qué? Because of the issue that the physical obedience to the law, right, creates a blockage like the, the curtain and the tabernacle as I started off with to the truth that is behind it. 
And it becomes an inconsistency. Entonces lo que pasa es que Israel antes interpretaba espiritualmente la escritura, el Torah. Lo que pasa es que con el tiempo ellos, ellos eliminaron eso porque la, la, la fisicalidad de la obediencia a la ley de Dios físicamente hacía contradicción, contraste con la enseñanza espiritual. Y entonces ellos no podían, eh, you know, eh, no podían armonizar lo espiritual con lo, el, la necesidad de obedecer físicamente la ley de Dios. Y esa razón ellos entonces prohibieron en interpretación espiritual de la palabra. So, they prohibited the spiritualization of Torah because of that conflict that it caused, and it causes it. Because it's very, you read Torah, you read Torah, and you will have a contrast between the obeisance of it and the any type of spiritual understanding of it. Because the spiritual understanding of it really takes you into a different uh, dimension, if you will. El entendiendo el Torah espiritualmente te lleva a otra dimensión. Y uno que si no se, eh, si no hay eh, 100% entendimiento, porque la carne es así, no hay, hay disparidad. Y... And if there's not an equal understanding in everyone, let's say between the spiritual understanding and the physical obeisance, the practice, you're going to have conflicts, uneasiness between these people, one that has understanding and the others, most of them who don't, because we have to speak the truth here. It is, it is easier for human obeisance and and uh, humans to have you know simplistic understanding of things than it is for them to have more complex understanding like spiritualization of scripture it is más fácil tener obediencia a cosa física que en tener entendimiento y comprensión de de cosas abstractos que es la espiritualización de escritura de Torah But we don't have to go back in the Bible for that. We can see it today. Because the Hebrew roots, in the Hebrew roots movement, there's already a divide growing. <laughs> it was just a matter of time. <laughs> Así que hasta hoy día se podía ver, se puede ver, porque hasta hoy día se está viendo una división entre los raíces hebreas. Ya hay, ya hay... Miembros de los raíces hebreas que están espiritualizando Torah. So we have people now in the Hebrew Roots Movement that, is, that are spiritualizing Torah. That are coming to the spiritual realization and, and allowing a spiritual interpretation of Torah to take place. And, and, the, and the others who are Hebrew roots who are focused on the physical obeisance of, are now already engaged in debating those who have the spiritual understanding. It's already happening. So, <laughs> así que uh, ya, ya están debatiendo entre los que tienen in the, la, idea, la interpretación y espiritual con los que son los tradicionistas de los raíces hebreos que quieren ver las cosas, you know, físicamente nada más. So that is already happening. And this happens, and this happened already. And you see, the, what the Hebrew Roots Movement actually did was revisit old debates that already occurred in history. Estos debates ya se existieron, ya existieron y ya fueron conquistados por la iglesia 
la iglesia cristiana es el resultado después de tanto debate después de tanta pelea, división etcétera, etcétera se quedó parado la iglesia cristiana so these debates were long debated, long fought over and the survivor of all of those was the Christian church Now the Hebrew roots wants to go back and debate stuff that was already debated and lost. And, and, and what do we see right now happening within the Hebrew roots movement? Debate is happening in there already. Again, because the Christian um, realization and fulfillment of Torah is already in the Hebrew roots movement. And, and, and now the traditionalists of the Hebrew Roots movement are fighting with, with the ones who are, uh, who are understanding Torah in the spiritual set. Así que ya este debate fue peleado, pero ahora cuando los, eh, los raíces hebreos quieren eh, volver a lo, a lo, lo perdido de antes, entonces ahora están levantando también aquellos que están viendo la, la realidad espiritual de Torah y ahora están peleando entre sí otra vez, porque esto ya sucedió van a terminar siendo evangélicos al fin <laughs> so they're coming around full circle this is what's going to happen porque la, el problema es que aunque hay mucha gente bruto, yo voy a decirlo, yo hablo no, sin pelo en la lengua, perdone. Pero hay mucha brutalidad, mucha estupidez en, en, en la gente hoy día. Y, pero el humano aprende. You know, eso es lo que pasa, que, que con el tiempo los humanos aprenden. Y aunque una organización trata de forzar la tradición y amarrar y es triunfante que tiene éxito pero no importa con el tiempo con el tiempo las generaciones generaciones o cambia la organización o se vacían se quedan ahí un poco un grupo de fieles porque eh, la gente aprende y las generaciones Aumenten en conocer y entendimiento. Eso es tiempo. You know, so over time, uh, you have organizations always who, who have tried to freeze dry the, their beliefs in an organization. That's why you have the, these churches, traditional churches, who have frozen their doctrines in an attempt to maintain that understanding from yesterday. And what happens is that as generations continue, they get educated, there's more knowledge, more understanding, and simply people see that that belief is ancient, you know, it doesn't, it's really, it's not truthful because you begin to see and understand more things. And so those organizations become less and less uh, relevant. relevant. And, and people just don't go there. You have a little group, a faithful group, holding on to the tradition. But that's all it is. It's a tradition. That the truth is ever expanding and ever present in the world. Because God would not allow it to ex extinguish. Dios no va a permitir que la verdad se extingue. Pero estas organizaciones tienen que, que beber y entender que Dios sigue. Y la, y la sociedad sigue y hay crecimiento and there's growth intellectually you know understanding wise so again um, it's, this is a simple matter here of having understanding of understanding what God is saying first you don't have to you can look at it as physical as you want But the first verse of the Bible tells you that God is not physical. That's it. La primer, tú te quieres ver las cosas físicas como tú quieras, pero el primer verso, el primer verso de la Biblia dice que Dios no es físico. Punto. Se terminó. Ese argumento está acabado. So that's a finished and ended argument. God is not physical. 
So don't tell me that you that the scriptures are just physical. They're to be to be considered physical. Sorry. This is the word of God. And that is a spiritual entity. God is spiritual, not physical. Así que esto es la palabra de Dios. Y Dios no es físico. So the, on the front, you hear your teachers saying that you cannot spiritualize the uh, Torah. You know, again, you're going to follow man or you're going to follow God. Man is physical. God isn't. God is spiritual. It's just up to you. Follow physical or spiritual. You decide. Usted va a seguir lo físico al hombre que es físico y el hombre te está diciendo que no se puede espiritualizar la palabra de Dios, de Torah, o tú vas a seguir y buscar de Dios. ¿Qué? ¿Quién es espiritual? Usted tiene que, que decidir es lo espíritu o lo físico. Usted decide. Ok, but now you're educated. Ahora tú estás educado y ahora tú sabes la diferencia. All right. So then we have the rest of creation here. You know what goes down. But the point I want to mention here is uh, verse 26. So let's go to verse 26. Vamos a ir al 26 porque tú sabes lo que sucede en la creación. But in verse 26, what happens? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay. El verso 26 que Dios dice, hagamos al hombre en nuestra imagen y semejanza. Okay. Este hombre fue llamado Adán. This a man was called Adam. Okay. And then in verse, in chapter 3 of Genesis. Entonces en Génesis capítulo 3. Now we're going to our next point, uh, el punto próximo. Uh, we see que in verse, in chapter 3, uh, <clears throat> we see, uh, and we just read 12, uh, uh, verso 12 para, solo para actualizarnos lo que sucedió. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. La mujer que me diste para estar conmigo me dio del árbol y comí. Okay? Sabemos que la Eva le dio del fruto prohibido que Dios había prohibido. We know that, uh, that Eve gave him of the fruit that God had prohibited them from eating, consuming, in the Garden of Eden. So so what happened to man? Man fell from his former state. Entonces el hombre cayó de su estado original. Again, this is the beginning. Esto es el principio. Okay? Uh, this is what happened. This sets off the rest of the Bible. It is not Israel. Is there Israel here? Está Israel aquí? No. There's no Israel here. There's men here. The men of the world. The people of the world. Man and woman. That is what God created. God created Adam. What's in Israel? Dios creó a Adán. No fue Israel. Okay. Now, he said that the day you shall eat, you shall surely die. El día que comieres, de cierto moriréis. Okay, I'm not going to get into too much of the detail of how man died. If he died, if he didn't die, what, what does that mean? Everyone agrees, or most of the religious groups agree, that he died spiritually. Que, que Adán, están casi todos de acuerdo que Adán murió espiritualmente. No voy a entrar en los detalles porque tengo muchos videos hablando de estos detalles y hablaré de estos detalles en otra enseñanza. But what have we, what do we have here? Again, primordially. Pri, uh, what do we have primarily? <coughs> ¿Qué tenemos aquí primariamente? ¿Qué tenemos aquí primordialmente? 
¿Qué tenemos aquí como prioridad? What do we have here as a priority? What we have here is the problem. God is showing you the problem that man has. That man has, you know, has gone into. He's in a quagmire. He's in trouble. El hombre se metió en problema aquí. Eso es lo que Dios está tratando de enseñarte. ¿De, de quién está hablando Dios? ¿De la casa de Jacob? ¿De los hijos de Israel? No. You know, God isn't talking about the house of Jacob or, or the children of Israel. He's not, where, there's no house of Jacob here. There are no children of Israel here. There are people here that God created and now have gotten into trouble. Se metieron en problema y ahora están ahí. Eso que vemos aquí, no casa de Jacob ni hijo de Israel. Okay, so, so are you understanding that if God only is dealing with Israel, all of this was unnecessary? Si Dios solamente está tratando con Israel, todo esto es innecesario. All of this does is gives Gentiles the idea that they matter, which is not what the Jews teach and not what the Hebrew roots teach. Esto lo que hace es enseñar que los gentiles importan a Dios. Y eso no es la enseñanza que enseña los raíces hebreos ni tampoco lo creen los judíos. And why don't they believe it? Let me talk about the Jews, right? Why do the Jews do not believe that God gives a darn about Gentiles? ¿Por qué los judíos no creen que Dios le importa, you know, de, de los gentiles? I'll show you. Let's go to the scripture. Oh, santo, listen. You, you guys got to be careful. Oh, my. We're going, we're going to show you the stuff. This is the origination of all of this stuff. Look at this. Vamos a ver aquí. And uh, this is in, in Spanish. Let's see if we can get the... Let's get the... In Exodus... 19, Éxodo 19. Exodus 19, and this is what the God said. Listen, and 3, verse 3, And Moses went up unto God. By the way, there are Gentiles in Exodus 19. Okay, know this. Remember this. There are Gentiles here. There are Gentiles with Israel. Okay? Hay, hay gentiles aquí, en, en Éxodo 19, los que salieron de Egipto no solamente fueron hijos de Israel, también habían gentiles, un, un multitud mixto. So there was a mixed multitude, they're not, they're not Jews, they're not uh, house of Jacob, they were not the children of Israel, so you have to understand that. When God says this, there are other people there, Gentiles. Okay, and God says to Moses clearly, precisely, claramente y precisamente. God says, "Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and the children of Israel." Así que dirás así a la casa de Jacob y a los hijos de Israel es Specificamente, specifically, okay, to distinguish from the other guys who were there, which were Gentiles from other nations. Para distinguir entre los demás personas que estaban allí, que eran de los diferentes naciones, gentiles, paganos, etc. Okay, they were pagan. Gentiles from other nations were there. God excluded them from the instructions, Torah. 
That's what Torah means. Instructions. Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. Así dirás a la casa de Jacob y los hijos de Israel. Las instrucciones. Torah. Dios sabía que habían gentiles. No lo incluyó. Porque sencillamente si el Torah, las instrucciones eran para todos, Dios dirá, así dirás a todos. You know, if, if, if the instructions were for everybody, Shabbat, the Ten Commandments, etc., God would have said, and tell everyone, Thus thou shalt, thus shalt thou say to all, to everyone gathered at the mountain, any little thing like that that you know God would say normally at any other given time. But here, here he specifically says, for goodness sake, man, don't you understand English, Hebrew, or Spanish by now? Ustedes no entienden, no entienden lenguaje, idioma, inglés, español, eh, hebreo, no entienden. A la casa de Jacob y a los hijos de Israel. No es a todo el mundo. Dios sabe decir a todo el mundo, a toda la tierra. Porque toda la tierra es mía. You want, you want me to prove you that God knows how to say all the earth? Here it is in the same chapter. Aquí como la gente dejan de estar en la ignorancia defendiendo errores. So that people can stop defending erroneous doctrine. Here we see that God says, For all the earth is mine. So when God wants to talk about everybody, He has a fancy way of saying it. He says, All. You know, that, wow, my goodness, what will we do without the word all? God said all. See that? When God wants to say all, when he means all, he can say it. Oh, praise God. Alabado sea Dios. Él puede decir todos. Porque toda la tierra, toda la tierra es mía. Él sabe decir, Jehová sabe decir todo. Praise God. Alabado. Alábalo si puede. You know, praise him if you can. God can say all. He knows what all is. I know what all is. But some of y'all don't know what y'all all means. You don't know that God can say all. You, you're getting it confused with the house of Jacob and the children of Israel. Están, se confunden con la casa de Jacob y los hijos de Israel, todos. No, eso no son todos. Sorry, I, I really, you know, it's just, it's just basic language, folks. Esto es idioma, este es lenguaje sencillo. Sencillo. No que está brincando, haciendo excusas por lo ética y esto que otro teorías y esto y historia you know we, they, 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 they do all sorts of hurdles and things to, to, to find try to find a connection and try come on it's plain and simple and at the end of the day God could have just said all and you know what and that would have been it but it isn't it is it así que con decir todo ya hubiera Dios eliminado todo excusa eh, ahí claramente dile a todos y eso es punto y claro pero hay que hacer tanto arreglo y historia y conectar y, y tratar de conectar cosas porque las creencias suyas necesitan arreglo arreglar lo que Dios dijo aquí claramente because they need to fix what God said clearly and simply okay so but we we didn't come actually for that but I think where the point is made right uh, no vinimos aquí a ver ese punto pero por lo menos vemos, vimos ese punto why are we here for really to show you something he said 
Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, remember that, if si, obedi, si oyeres hoy mi voz y guardas en mi pacto, then ye shall be, then, then, this is math. Esto es matemática. Okay? Entonces, Ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. See that? Above all people. A peculiar treasure or a special treasure. Above all people. That's why the Jewish people do not believe that Gentiles have anything to do with Jehovah. Por eso los judíos piensan que lo, los gentiles no tienen nada que ver con Jehová. Porque ellos son el tesoro especial de Jehová. Porque Jehová dijo que ellos eran tesoro sobre toda la gente. ¿Sí? So the, again, the ideation, the mistake that's being made is ignoring again something else that God says right here. What are they ignoring? ¿Qué es lo que están ignorando los, los judíos y los hebreos raíces? ¿Qué están ignorando? Esta, esta clarificación, este punto, este detallito, this little detail here is what they're ignoring. What does it say? For all the earth is mine okay it doesn't say you know they could be it doesn't say well they were mine no it says they are mine see so israel was to be a peculiar a particular treasure unto me above all people above all people because all the people all the earth are mine but Israel was supposed to be a special treasure why porque Israel estaba supuesto ser un tesoro especial sobre toda la gente todas las naciones por qué Right? Porque toda la tierra es de Dios. Toda la gente, todos los gentiles son de Dios. Pero ¿por qué Israel iba a ser, o lo, como ellos dicen, son, pero voy a probar que no lo son, un tesoro sobre todas las demás? Si, obede si obedecieran mi voz igualdasen mi pacto if they would obey my voice and keep my covenant let's go to Jeremiah 31 así vamos a ir a Jeremia a Jeremia let's go Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, 31 to 34. Fíjase, what does it say? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to to the covenant that I made with their fathers. What is that covenant? The one we just read about in Exodus 19, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That covenant, right? El, el, no de acuerdo al pacto que hice con sus padres. ¿Qué fue ese pacto? Este, si oyeres mi voz, igualdase mi pacto. Ese pacto, este, está diciendo Dios en Jeremías, ¿qué cosa? Que no, el nuevo pacto no es conforme 
a ese pacto viejo. ¿Por qué? For the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. ¿Qué dice Dios? Es de ese pacto. Which my covenant they break. And, I, and although I was a husband unto them. So it is a husband's, it is a marriage covenant. Era un pacto de boda, de casamiento, de matrimonio. And God says that they broke it. That means it is no longer what? Valid. No es válido ya. See that? So you, when you are doing scripture, you need to bring the scripture together. See it. So the, the pact, the first covenant no longer is valid. What was the first covenant? If you do everything I tell you to do, right? You shall be to me a kingdom of priests. You shall be, first of all, a peculiar treasure. Did they keep the covenant? Guardaron ellos el pacto. Jehová dice que no. Entonces, ¿los judíos son una nación particular para Dios? So, are the Jews a peculiar treasure above all people? No. Absolutely not. Because they violated the first covenant. Ellos invalidaron el, el primer pacto. No son un tesoro peculiar. Neither, tampoco, son, and this is how you can really tell that they're not today, because they were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Porque estaban supuestos ser un reino de sacerdotes. And now the question begs to be answered. La pregunta hay que hacerlo. ¿Quién en el mundo es el reino de sacerdotes? Que todo el mundo reconoce como sacerdotes. Si alguien por ahí está muriendo y pide un sacerdote, ¿a quién mandan? Un rabino. See, if someone in the world is there dying in the corner and he asks for a priest, who do they bring him? A rabbi from Israel? A roe from the Hebrew Roots Movement? <laughs> Un roe de los hebreos raíces. Now, I am not Catholic. Yo no soy católico. Yo no estoy diciendo ahí, eh, promoviendo la iglesia católica. No. Hay, hay muchas razones eh, que son para otros videos que no. Pero recuerde cómo es que Dios enseña. You have to also remember eh, how God teaches. He makes his points very clear. Él hace sus puntos muy claras. Ok. Muy claras y centrales, porque todos los hombres hacen mal, because all men do make errors. All men, no one has 100% truth. No, nadie tiene 100% la verdad. So no hay una organización que tiene toda la verdad. Todos 100% están con 100% de conocimiento. Eso no existe. You know, there's no organization on the earth that has 100% the truth. It doesn't exist because human beings are looking through the curtain or at the curtain. You know, the curtain is in the way. La, la, eh, el, el ser humano tiene que ver a través de la cortina. La cortina encubre los ojos. No se ve claramente las cosas. Okay. So, ninguna organización tiene toda, todo 100% de la verdad como organización. Pero las verdades centrales pueden ser verdaderas. But the central theme, the central doctrine, the central teaching can indeed be the truth. Essentially the truth of the matter. And the most important ones. 
Así que eh, las verdades centrales pueden ser la verdad y lo más importante. Y la verdad de la iglesia católica que ha preservado desde los tiempos de Jesucristo es que Yeshua es el Mesías. Eso es lo que está enseñando la iglesia católica y ha preservado por todas estas edades. So the, the Christian church, the Catholic church in particular, has maintained that Yeshua is the Messiah. Yeshua is Mashiach. That's it. That is the central core teaching of the Catholic Church. Jewish. The Jewish Savior is Yeshua. Que la, el Mesías hebreo eh, o judío es Yeshua. Eso es lo que ha enseñado y preservado la Iglesia Católica. And because they have, they have realized and maintained the teaching of that truth, they are the, the priests of the world. They are a nation. In fact, in fact, the Vatican is not just a church. It is a nation. It has a flag. It is recognized in the League of Nations. El, el Vaticano no es solamente una iglesia, es una nación reconocida con bandera y por la, la Liga de Naciones. Hay embajadores al Vaticano y el Vaticano tiene sus emisores. So the Vatican receives ambassadors and sends emissaries to different nations. It is a nation and unto itself. Es una nación entre sí. The word of God is true. It's fulfilled. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom. A kingdom of priests. Y serán para mí un reino de sacerdotes. Y eso es. Describe hoy día el Vaticano. Y lo que representa el Vaticano, como hacen todo y reconocen todos los, los fieles hebreos raíces, es que todos los cristianos están ahí, evangélicos. Son hijas de, de, de la, del reino de los sacerdotes. The evangelical church, as stated by the Hebrew roots people, are a daughter, a branch of this kingdom of priests. And we take it. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. Gracias por reconocernos como parte del reino de los sacerdotes. Thank you for recognizing us as part of a branch of the, the kingdom of priests. But we fulfill God's word. Nosotros cumplimos la palabra de Dios. Nosotros preservamos la enseñanza de la realidad, de la verdad. We have maintained in me, uh, the teaching of the truth. And that is why the Christianity is the kingdom of priests recognized all worldwide and historically. That's something that the Hebrew roots would never be able to do. Así que los raíces hebreas nunca podrán, ni los eh, eh, judíos, nunca podrán ser nación de sacerdotes. Hasta que, eh, hasta llegar el, 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 la Nueva Jerusalén, no va a poder ser. Not until the New Jerusalem is formed, it descends from heaven, and then, and then, can the Jews become the, the kingdom of priests. Because Jesus will be reigning, Yeshua will be reigning, the whole world. In the millennium. In the millennium, Yeshua va a ser rey sobre toda la tierra. Entonces, los judíos podrán cumplir su papel. Tomar su lugar que estaba supuesto tener desde el principio. 
pero que mal entendieron la palabra de Yahweh, la Torah. They, then they will understand Torah the way it was supposed to be understood and then take their rightful role as priests to the nations. So now let me ask you a simple question. What is it that they're not understanding now that they will be then understanding then? <laughs> ¿Qué es lo que no están entendiendo ahora o a través de la historia que van entonces a entender en, en aquel entonces? They're going to be understanding what makes the Christian church it now. Van a estar entendiendo lo que la iglesia cristiana es ya. Because the end result, the result of it is a kingdom of priests. El resultado del entendimiento de Torah es que son, se, se convierten en una nación de sacerdotes. My goodness, Lord have mercy. You know, it, it, like how you can be more clearer than what God is saying here. Look me, again, read it again for yourself. Léelo otra vez por sí mismo. No puede cantar más claro el gallo. If, if ye obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, Then, 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 then. So, if if anyone obeys the his voice and keeps the covenant, then ye and this is again Israel shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Then. Entonces sería un tesoro especial sobre toda la gente. Porque mía es toda la tierra. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. See that? So that is what, that is the plan of God. Was to make Israel a kingdom of priests. El plan de Dios era de hacer Israel un reino de sacerdotes. ¿Qué es la función del sacerdote? What is the functioning of the uh, priest? What, do you know what the main function of the priest is? ¿Conoces lo que es la, primer, la primaria función del sacerdote en cualquier nación, en cualquier religión? What is the main primary function of the priest in any religious concept ever in the history of humankind at any place imaginable? What is the main function? And here's where people make the mistakes. Y aquí es donde la gente tiene su error. Pero uno dice, hacer sacrificio. <laughs> Because someone will say to make sacrifices. Right? A lot of you would say that. But in reality, there's a bigger job before you get to making sacrifices. In fact, you can't make the sacrifices until this is done. Aún más mayor que hacer sacrificio, que mucha gente lo hubieran dicho, hay algo primero que hay que hacer. O si no, no se puede hacer celebrar los sacrificios. El, el primer trabajo del sacerdote es enseñar la fe. <laughs> so the first job of the priest is to teach the faith. Is to give the instructions to the faithful. So that the sacrifices can be made and had with some understanding and comprehension and acceptance and participation by those that you're sacrificing for. Así que el sacrificio tiene que ser hecho con la participación del pueblo <coughs> para que el pueblo sea partícipe de lo que está haciendo el funcionario del sacerdote en la función de hacer sacrificio. El, el sacerdote tiene que enseñar la fe, el por qué hacemos esto, la razón que hay que traer esta ofrenda, la razón que se trae este, este holocausto. 
So being a priest is being a teacher. So siendo el sacerdote es siendo un maestro. Y por eso Dios ah, llamó a Israel. And the people don't understand that. God called Israel and, and they're special because if they would do what he said, which would make them teachers to the all the earth is mine, to all the earth. Para ser maestros a todo el mundo, porque toda la tierra es mía. El, el propósito de Dios con Israel, and this is the key point here, the main point to Israel, why is there in Israel? was to be a teacher for Adam. Para ser un maestro a Adán. Para traer a Adán, toda la tierra es mía, a los pies de Yeshua. Para traer, to bring Adam to the feet of Yeshua, to accepting Yeshua, the crucified Christ, so that the world can be saved. That is the purpose of Israel. But my covenant they break. Jeremiah 31, 31, 32. Pero su mi pacto rompieron. Jeremiah 31, 31 y 32. Es clarísimo. Clearly. So the main, so again, it's a failure to understand the purpose of Israel. You get lost in all the instruction and the focus God makes on Israel because the salvation was supposed to come from Israel, from the Jews. Uh, ustedes se, se equivocan por la mucha énfasis que hace Dios sobre Israel porque la realidad es que la salvación estaba supuesto venir o viene de eh, Israel. De los judíos. <coughs> Vamos a verlo en la escritura. Let's, let's take a look for that in scripture so that you can see it. I had Jeremiah 31, 31 y 32. Okay, and it says very clearly here, Ye worship, ye know not what we worship. Okay, sorry, let me read that. <laughs> ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. See that? Así que eh, Jesús dijo, Yeshua dijo que eh, los otros, está hablando con, yo, yo creo que la, la eh, I believe it's the Samaritan, uh, this point um, okay so let's see uh, yeah this is the Samaritan woman the woman from Samaritan from Samaria 
And he tells her that you guys don't know who you're serving. You, you guys say that you serve, but you don't know what. And he's saying that the Jews know what. Okay? So Jesús, Yeshua está diciendo que los judíos conocen. Los judíos tienen conocimiento porque eso es Torah. ¿Sí? And, y la salvación es de los judíos. Viene de los judíos. Porque la enseñanza, la base, el fundamento es Torah. Es Torah. Eso es claro. So it's clear that Torah is the basis for the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the Yeshua. Es el evangelio de Yeshua. Está en Torah. Okay? Es la base. Es la instrucción preliminaria. Las primeras cosas. So the first things are first. These are, but the first things are not the end things. Lo primeras cosas no son las cosas finales, no son las cosas últimas, no son las cosas altas. So the first things are not the high things, they're not the more complex things. The first things are the baby things, the things that establish the reasons and, and the steps to build into understanding the revelation that all the manifestation, all the fulfillment, hello, fulfillment that was later to be revealed, manifest, made reality. Así que las primeras cosas establecen el fundamento, la base, para que lo demás viene a realizarse en el futuro. So, again, the salvation is of the Jews and they were supposed to obey la salvación de los judíos están supuestos a obedecer y guardar el pacto y pero violaron el pacto so they were supposed to uh, fulfill and they were supposed to keep the pact the covenant and because if they kept the covenant they were supposed to become a peculiar treasure to God, why? Because they would be what? A kingdom of priests. Ellos iban a ser un tesoro especial para Dios porque serían un reino de sacerdotes que enseñan a toda la tierra. Pero, ¿qué pasó? Jeremías 31, 31, 32. Violaron mi pacto, rompieron mi pacto. So, what happened to Israel? They broke the covenant. So they could no longer be, they're not, a peculiar treasure to God. Because they're not doing the work they were supposed to do. They don't have the understanding and they're not doing the work they were supposed to do. So no tienen el entendimiento Israel y no pueden hacer, ejecutar el oficio de sacerdotes a todo el mundo. Ese papel comprobantemente es de la iglesia cristiana. So, demonstrably, the Christian church in, in, as a whole is the kingdom of priests on the planet. Historically speaking, biblically speaking, the kingdom of priests are the Christian church. You can't argue with that. It is simply a matter of history. Just look. It's just ask anyone, go down the street with a microphone and video. Who are the priests in the world? What church, what group do you know that the world considers priests? Hello? Answer the question. And just go along the street, any street you want to go, any city. Cualquier ciudad que tú quieres ir, cualquier lugar, y pregunta de en el mundo, en cualquier sitio, ¿Quiénes son reconocidos como los sacerdotes? ¿Qué, qué, fe, qué, you know, ¿Qué fe en general es reconocido como sacerdotes? Y incluso los musulmanes te dirán cristianos. <laughs> Even the Muslim would have to tell you the Christians. <laughs> They're the ones that have the priests. Even they would tell it to you. Because that's the fact. It's clear. It is not debatable, ladies and gentlemen. No se puede argumentar claramente que eso es la iglesia cristiana. La, la cosa es por qué. ¿Por qué es la iglesia cristiana? 
Sencillamente porque la iglesia cristiana preservó, no es perfecta, preservó la verdad peculiar, el elemento pe que hace peculiar cuando hay entendimiento de Torah. So what you have is that the Christian church maintained the peculiarity, the element that makes a nation peculiar, a peculiar treasure for God and qualifies them to be priests unto the world. <coughs> that was preserved by the Christian church and that is as simple and as clear as anything could possibly be. And if you don't see that, then you are simply blind and um, unfortunate. You're just being blind. You're being ignorant and blind because you want to be. Uh, because you don't want to know the truth. And the truth is the only thing that can set you free. Así que usted no quiere conocer la verdad si tú no reconoces esa realidad. Y es solamente la verdad que te puede hacer libre. Conocerás la verdad, Jesús dijo, y la verdad os hará libre. So, here we have already shown you the conciseness of the scripture, the evidentiary thread of scripture, la evidencia, el hilo de evidencia de la escritura que establece claramente las, no solamente la declaración de Dios, It doesn't, what we've shown you is not just the declarations of God, but the evidence that God provided in Scripture so that you can know who is right and who is wrong. Así que puesto, puso Dios en la Escritura cómo usted puede distinguir, discernir quién está correcto y quién no está correcto. Sencillamente, porque puso ahí la evidencia. ¿Qué son la evidencia? Let's look at it again. What is the evidence that God provides so that anyone can see, look, and look for the evidence of who is right and who is wrong? And the evidence is here. If ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant... Then, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So the first thing is that if any, any belief, any religion that tells you that they're special and no one else is, is, is of any uh, regard for God is erroneous right there. So just walk away, simple. Cualquier religión que dice que, que solamente que, que nadie más es eh, especial para Dios, nadie más es eh, considerado por Dios, solamente un grupito, usted ya sabe que eso no es la verdad. Eso es un error. So camina, deja ese grupo. And the second thing is, and, 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 y, y. Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Y serán una nación de sacerdote. ¿Ok? De sacerdocio. Aquí, así que la evidencia de ser tesoro especial o particular para Dios. The evidence of being a peculiar treasure. What people will see is that you are a kingdom of priests. Lo que la gente verán es que tú eres un, un, un pueblo de una nación de sacerdote. Porque eso se puede ver. Right? So, una nación de sacerdote comprueba de ser un tesoro pe peculiar y confirma que haya un cumplimiento de la voz de Dios, el Torah, las instrucciones de Dios y 
el cumplimiento del pacto. So what what God is showing us is that the kingdom of priests is your proof, is the evidence that there is a peculiar treasure and that that treasure is peculiar or special because there is an obeisance to the voice of God and to the covenant. Okay, so that is what it is. You can debate with God all you want. Tú puedes debatir con Dios todo lo que quiera, pero la palabra de Dios dice claramente que el, el, el reino de sacerdotes solamente es si son un tesoro particular, especial, y eso solo puede haberse si hay obediencia a la voz de Dios, la instrucción es toda y eh, guardar el, el pacto, estar en pacto, en, en unión con Dios, ser pueblo de Dios. Now, now you're going to say, well, ¿cómo tú llegaste a toda esa conclusión? But vamos a Jeremías. How, how did we get to this conclusion that you're making now that Uh, it necessarily means that the, the, the ones who are the kingdom of priests are fulfilling a, a covenant. How do you get to that? I'm going to show you that now. We go back to Jeremiah. Vamos a ir a Jeremiah. Vamos a ir a Jeremiah. Jeremiah, right? Remember. God says that behold the days come saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant yo haré un nuevo pacto so in either case we're dealing with a new thing not the old thing so in cualquier caso usted tiene que reconocer que estamos bregando aquí con un nuevo pacto no el viejo Now, it says here, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And that's right. Because God is still dealing with the house of Jacob and the house of Israel and the house of Judah. God is still faithful to his promise. See? God's still faithful. But remember that all the earth is mine. All the earth is mine. God's plan moves on, continues, even if Israel fail. Aunque Israel falló, recuerda que Dios sigue sus planes. El plan de Dios es salvar el hombre, salvar el mundo, salvar a Adán. Siguió el plan de Dios. Ya sabemos que siguió el plan de Dios porque hay una nación de sacerdotes. That's how you know. Because there's a nation of priests. You know that God's plan continued because now there's a nation of priests that, that teaches about this Jewish guy called Jesus. So then the promise of God, the purpose of God continued even if the, Jew, the Israel and Jews did not do faithfulness to the pact, to the, the covenant. So aunque no fueron fieles eh, Israel ni los judíos al pacto de Dios, Vemos la evidencia que Dios continuó su plan de todo modo usando los gentiles y salvando los gentiles directamente, sin todo Israel, con sus apóstoles. Y la iglesia primitiva que alcanzó a los gentiles, Dios siguió su plan de salvar el mundo, punto. Y ese grupo, esa iglesia, es, demostró la evidencia de la obediencia porque Dios le hizo la ayuda de Dios sin, sin Dios no se podía hacer hecho no se podía haber hecho without God's help the Christian church could not become kingdom of priests yet it became the kingdom of priests because God helped them to be God gave them victories God brought, helped the gospel to 
go across the whole world because all the earth is mine. And that is the nation of priests that everyone knows. Y todo eso son los sacerdotes que todo el mundo conoce. Los cristianos, porque como los evangélicos son hijas de la iglesia católica, pues, hello. Pues nosotros estamos ahí, somos hijas de la iglesia. Ok, so somos. But the fact is that we are preaching the truth of God, the truth of his gospel, the truth of Yeshua. Nos, eh, la realidad es que na, nosotros estamos predicando el evangelio de Cristo. Estamos llevando la verdad a todas partes del mundo. Nosotros estamos predicando a un judío crucificado, un Mesías, llamado Yeshua. Así lo decimos Jesús. Pero somos los sacerdotes del mundo. Estamos enseñando. Eso es, eso es punto. Ustedes buscan su detallito, que esto, que lo otro, bla, bla, bla. Pero el punto es, ¿quiénes son los sacerdotes, la nación de sacerdotes? You know, you, they, they want to pick and point, pinpoint certain little, little things here. Oh, his name is Yeshua, it isn't Jesus. And all. They all try to put these little things that don't make any, that, that, that have no weight in them. It doesn't matter. The What matter is, Who, I'm going to get the, now the big hammer here. What matters is who is all the kingdom of priests. Okay? That's what matters. ¿Quiénes son el reino de sacerdote? Eso es lo que importa. No si el nombre es Yeshua o Jesus. It's not that if his name is Yeshua or Jesus or what. The, the point here is who are the nation of priests. ¿Quiénes son la nación de sacerdote? Eso es el punto. Y esa es la evidencia. No quien llama a Yeshua, Yeshua. It isn't who calls Yeshua, Yeshua. It is who are the king and the priests. ¿Quiénes son los rey, los, de la nación de sacerdote? No hay que llama a Yeshua, Yeshua. <laughs> That's not the evidence. But yet most of the Hebrew root people say That's evidence. See, they don't call Jesus by the, the real name. So that's like, all of a sudden, that's like the evidence. No, no. The evidence is who are the kingdom of priests. That's what the Bible says is the evidence, not who calls Yeshua, Yeshua. No es lo que la Biblia no dice que lo que llaman Yeshua, Yeshua son, son los realidad. La iglesia o la verdadera iglesia. La, la, lo que enseña la escritura que es el reino de los sacerdotes. ¿Quién es? Eso es la realidad. So again, if you're going to believe God, if you're going to believe in Scripture, then believe the Scripture. The Scripture provides the evidence of who is right. And the others are simply wrong. Now, that doesn't mean being right. Only means that the main information to be saved is contained there. Okay, that's it. So that doesn't mean that everything that the Catholic Church has done or teaches is 100% right. That doesn't mean that. It means that if you follow the basic teaching, believe in Jesus Christ, accept him into your heart. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow his footsteps. If you believe, and accept and walk every day of your life following the, the will of God through Yeshua, through Jesus, letting Jesus grow in you, becoming more and more like Jesus every day and less and less like you are and were, then that is the truth. That is that, that's taught by Catholics. That is taught by every other Christian church that came from Catholicism. That is the main teaching of Christianity. And what God is saying, the evidence of the peculiar treasure above all other nations is that you are a kingdom of priests. So the evidence is given. The main teaching is preserved. The teaching and the preaching of the gospel is in the hands of the Christian church. See, and and it, it means that the ones who are teaching the truth, 
are not, they're more than being Catholic. They're more than being evangelical. So it has nothing to do with being evangelical, being Lutheran, being Baptist, being Pentecostal, being whatever, or Catholic. It has it doesn't even be about Seventh Day Adventists. I'm going to include uh, some of my family members. It has nothing to do with it. Okay, it has to do with walking integrally, with with integrity, following Jesus's footsteps. No, esto no tiene que ver con siendo católico, con siendo eh, pentecostal, con siendo bautista, con siendo luterano, lo que sea. Presbiteriano no tiene que ver esas cosas, esos nombres, esas organizaciones, lo que ni ni adventista. Lo que tiene que ver es siendo hijo de Dios, being a child of God, period, which transcends all the labels, que transcende todos los lo, lo títulos. That's why it's an error to look at me and say, oh, but, but you, you're a Pentecostal. Hey, listen, I'm a child of God, over and above any Pentecostalism. Sobre cualquier pentecostalismo que yo tendré o empecé en el pentecostalismo, el hecho es que yo soy diferente hoy día. Yo soy más que un pentecostal. Yo soy más que un bautista. Yo soy más que un luterano. Yo soy más que, que un presbiteriano. I'm more than any of those churches, more than any of those denominations. More than a Catholic. A lot more, right? Somos más que católicos. Somos hijos de Dios. We are, we are children of God. Because we're not walking by Pentecostals. We're not walking by Lutheranism. We're not walking by Presbyterian. We're walking by the faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and, and walking towards God. That's what we're doing. It's above any organization. Right? So sobre cualquier organización. So that's the difference. One of the things the Hebrew roots people will always say that when they were Pentecostal, when they were Baptist, when they were Lutheran, when they were whatever. And that's the problem you have. Because the problem you have is that when you were those things, you were those things. That's your problem. It was never mine. The problem is that they se convirtieron a una religión. Ellos eran luteranos, ellos eran presbiterianos, ellos eran pentecostales, ellos eran católicos. Y ese es su problema. No es, nunca ha sido el mío. Because I was always different. <laughs> Porque yo siempre era diferente cuando yo vine al Señor. Everyone can tell you that. You know, Rosado, there's always something strange about Rosado. Right, what was strange was I wasn't part of you guys ever. Yo nunca era parte de, de ninguna de esas cosas. Yo creí a Dios. Yo busqué de Dios. Santo es el Señor. Yo aprendí de Dios. I, I believed in God. I sought after God. And I learned from God. See? ¿Sí? And that's the difference. That's why I never left God. Yo, por eso yo nunca dejé a Dios. Dejé la iglesia para irme a otra creencia. I never left the faith to go to another faith. Because my faith is the one and the same has always been. My faith has been in the creator of the heavens and the earth. Mi fe ha sido siempre en el creador de los cielos y la tierra. Yo nunca fui a buscar otra fe, ni necesidad de buscar otra fe, porque yo ne, nunca era religioso. I was never religious. I didn't have to go look for another faith. I simply grew in the faith. Aleluya. Yo sem, simplemente crecí en la fe. Genuino. The genuine faith. Direct with God. Directamente a Dios. Which has always been my invitation to everyone who comes to these broadcasts. What do you think? You know, I, I look at times at how many people watch me live. I do things 
not at a scheduled time. They're ad hoc, so that's part of the issue. But really, why why is it that you know some people? Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't normally gravitate to my my video because you guys are all of you, most of you, looking for human uh, basic agreement. Ustedes están buscando mayoría. El, el acuerdo básico humano no están buscando la verdad you don't look for the truth and that's why you never have it y por eso nunca lo tendrán porque siempre están no matter what atheists that I've encountered all of them atheists you know uh, Adventists uh, any religion any, any, any even in the churches changing from one church faith to another church faith Hebrew roots, all of the people I've encountered, all of them, without exception, were Christian before. They, they, they were exposed to a Christian church of one type or another. And all of your complaints are based on you being religious. That's it, as simple as that. And I'm, I'm just looking and hearing at your argument. And I say, you, you never really sought the truth you never looked for God truly you just went through the religion ustedes siempre eh, 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 solo buscaron a Dios a través de la religión y nunca conocían a Dios porque cuando tú conoces a Dios la religión no importa no tiene que ver <laughs> That, that's how you know esa es la razón esa es como tú sabes y tú conoces pero si cuando tú ves a alguien cambiando de iglesia porque ay, ahí no enseñaron la verdad aquí esto you know, yo está, está buscando usted está viendo a una persona que no sabe lo que es la verdad todavía and the proof is in the pudding Because si el que conoce la verdad es sacerdote, you, do you, you, do, ¿tú crees que Dios va a sacar un sacerdote de un lugar donde puede enseñar a otros? Ustedes no piensan, ¿verdad? You think that, you know, they go from one church another, from one faith to another, like they're saying that now I found the truth, I left that church. And now I found the truth. And you, come on, let's talk. Do you think that God is going to take a priest out of a place where he can teach others? You think God is going to do that? That that's a thing of God? See, that's how you know that they're full of, uh, you know, you know what they're full of. I deal with animals, you know, every day. They're full of stuff that animals leave behind on the floor because that's a baloney. The people who go from one church or who leave one thing to go to another because they like discover the truth, that's baloney. You just went from one muck, from one troubled area into another. You're just as lost as you were before. Tú estás perdido ahora como era antes. That's a bunch of malarkey. You're irreverent and disobedient and you don't look for God you just look for your own thing ustedes no están buscando de Dios ustedes son desobedientes están buscando lo suyo eso es todo you, de, de, de Dios servicio de labios you're only giving God lip service that's all you do oh santo receive it in the name of Jesus accept the truth recibe la verdad en el nombre de Jesús porque eso es la verdad And until you know the truth, you won't be set free. You continue to do that. Y hasta que tú no recibes la verdad, no vas a conocer la verdad. Y va a estar encarcelado siempre. Siempre va a estar en ese mismo error. You don't need to be moving to another church. You need to be in priest where you are. Usted necesita ser sacerdote donde tú estés. Y ser luz en las tinieblas and be a light in the darkness that's what God does see that's the way God works Dios trabaja así pone luz en donde hay oscuridad 
Es just ridiculous how some people think. Es just totally unbiblical. Siempre la gente piensa fuera de la Biblia. It's, it's amazing. Amazing. All right. So, we've pretty much established that the declaration of the thinking of the Hebrew roots is misinterpreted from the beginning because they've abandoned the, the first thing just like the Jews do. Abandon the first priorities that God gives, that God establishes in His Word. Eh, como los judíos, los hebreos raíces abandonan lo primordial que Dios establece en la Palabra. And then they continue the practice. Entonces continúan en su hermenéutica la misma práctica. Because just like Exodus 19.3, what happened? Así como Exodus 19.3, no, no, no dan énfasis en el hecho que Dios especifica. Then also, no se dan, si tú le preguntas, y el propósito de Dios... En escoger a Israel es para salvarlos. Pero no, no, no se fijan en Éxodo 19, eh, 6, ¿verdad? Es 19, 6. Let's look at that. So, Éxodo 19, 6, ya. Yeah. Uh, o 5, 5 y 6. No, no dan énfasis en esto. Y estas son la evidencia, los resultados de hacer las cosas correctamente. So they don't look at the evidence of Exodus 19, 5 and 6, even, because you didn't hear about that till I mentioned it now, in this teaching. You won't hear this, because again, uh, they don't, uh, they don't uh, put emphasis on the evidence that God has placed in the scriptures so that you can know who, has, who is right and who is wrong. Ellos no quieren que usted enfocan sobre quién tiene la verdad y quién no tiene la verdad. Que no te, no te fijas. That you won't uh, notice, you won't, you won't, uh, you won't uh, what do you call it, realize that this is an evidence. This is a because you are doing the right thing, because of. This is a, a result of doing the right thing of having the right understanding. Esto es eh, el resultante de tener la comprensión correcta. Now, there's another thing in this. Hay otra cosa en, en este polémica aquí. There's another thing here in this issue. And that is the, what is it that's different? Because there is a difference, isn't it? Right? Isn't there a difference like between the Christian church and what Israel was supposed to do? No hay una diferencia aquí entre la iglesia cristiana y lo que Israel estaba supuesto hacer. Right? Yes or no? And this question may be hard if you're Hebrew roots. Because again, they're teaching you that you have to do what Israel is supposed to do, right? That's what they're teaching you. Uh -huh. But this is the this is the thing, and you condemn the Christian church, y entonces condenan la iglesia cristiana por no hacer lo que Israel está supuesto hacer. See, they condemn the Christian church for not doing what Israel is supposed to do. But the problem here is that this evidence that they are doing what God wants them to do is here. La evidencia está aquí. The results are had by the Christian church. So how can the Christian church have the results yet not do what God said Israel had to do. Okay. Pues como puede que la iglesia cristiana tenga los resultados que Dios dice que vendrá por obedecerle sin aparentemente estar obedeciendo a, a Jehová? Right? So that's a good question. See now, 
now we're getting into a good question, finally. Now that all the other garbage is out of the way, now we got a real question. How is it that the Christian church gets away with <laughs> becoming priests to the world when they're not, obviously, look, if you look at them, they're not keeping the Sabbath. No están guardando el sábado, pero somos sacerdotes de amor. ¿Cómo puede ser? They're not keeping the feast. No, no están guardando la fiesta. You can't really talk about the uh, nine commandments because they're pretty much keeping the nine commandments. Los nueve mandamientos no pueden decir nada, right? Porque más o menos, sí, uh, la iglesia cristiana mantiene los nueve mandamientos. But lo que pasa es que son diez, ¿verdad? <laughs> so, el, el Shabbat no lo están observando. ¿Cómo puede ser? Okay. Now, for this, you have to, you have to accept one thing. Usted tiene que aceptar una cosa para entender. Okay. Evidence is evidence. So you cannot deny the evidence. La evidencia no puede ser eh, ignorada. So the evidence is that the Christian church is fulfilling all of its duties. All of the duties that Israel was supposed to do. That's it. La iglesia cristiana cumplió y cumple con todos los requisitos que estaba supuesto hacer Israel. Punto. Eso es por la evidencia. All right? Porque lo que pasa aquí es tú no puedes asumir que tú estás correcto. ¿Sí? You cannot assume that you are right. But the evidence is the evidence. People refute the evidence because they think they're right. You see, that's wrong. You have to go by the evidence. The evidence says that the Christian church is fulfilling the requirements that Israel was supposed to fulfill. La evidencia señala que la iglesia cristiana sí cumple con los requisitos que estaba supuesto Israel hacer. Ahora, pero ¿por qué tú no lo ves? ¿Por qué es que tú no ves que están cumpliendo como usted? Y, y vamos a hablar claro de Shabbat. Usted no lo ve. La fiesta no lo está bien. So, we have to speak clearly. We're not looking, we're not, we don't see the Shabbat. We don't see the feast. Why is that? Okay. So, that's where we have to focus our attention. Why is that? Why don't we see it? So number one, let's go back to Jeremiah. Again, the scripture will show you why. So pay attention to God. God's going to tell you. Uh, aquí la escritura le va a decir, le va a enseñar la escritura el por qué eso es así. Okay? All right. Now, vaya Jeremiah. Vamos a go to Jeremiah again. First of all, Jehovah says that he's making a new covenant. That's the first thing. So it's not the old covenant. It's a new covenant. Okay? Es un nuevo pacto que Jehová está haciendo. No es el viejo. How do we know that? ¿Cómo sabemos? Porque el 32 de Jeremías 31 lo dice. No de acuerdo al pacto que hice. Not according to the covenant that I made. So it's not according what does according mean? According. Accord. You know what accord means? That's where we get in music. If you're a musician, chords. Chords from. What are chords? Chords are a combination of notes that sound good together. That are harmonious together. El acorde es son para los que tocan guitarra, los músicos, piano. De eso viene la palabra colde, colde, que son un grupo de, de notas individuales que juntos 
son armoniosos, que, que trabajan juntos, que están en armonía. Ok. So, uh, and in, in terms of people, in accord, it's people that are agreeing to do something. So we all, we all reached an accord. We all reached an agreement. See, we all reached an agreement to do this or to do that. That's in accordance. All right? Eso es estar de acuerdo, que estamos de acuerdo. Acuerdo viene de acord. Um, and let's see what this, I, I don't get the Spanish here any longer on this one, I guess. No, not here. So, that's what it means. So, entonces aquí, eh, no de acuerdo, right? Dice en español. So, cuando algo no está de acuerdo con, quiere decir que el nuevo pacto no está de acuerdo con el primer pacto. Es el lenguaje, es el idioma. You know, the language here, it says that the, the new covenant is not in agreement with the first one. It is not according to the first one so in 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 certain aspects it is different in cierto aspecto es diferente see ¿Sí? so most of the people that i've i've debated this with muchas de las personas que yo he debatido este punto ellos dicen pero nada cambia la ley so they'll argue that nothing changes the law And the law, remember the law are instructions. You got you to understand the Bible says instruction, not law. <laughs> law is the way we interpret instructions. Instructions in Hebrew. And when it's regarding to this set of so-called rules, then we interpret or read instructions as law. That's the way the Hebrew works. But the word itself means instruction. In other words, it doesn't never have to mean law. It just has to always be instructions. The people are not understanding this. This is part of human weakness and human lack of understanding. El problema aquí es la falta de comprensión humana que siempre interfiere con el bien entender. La palabra Torah es la palabra que se usa para ley en la Biblia. Es la misma palabra Torah que usa para instrucciones. Cualquier instrucciones. Dios dice a Abraham, vaya por aquí, dobla por allá, siéntate, haga su necesidad y come pan. Eso es Torah. Es Torah. Son instrucciones. Los diez mandamientos son instrucciones también. Porque es Torah. Todo es Torah. So, hay que entender que en el hebreo, Torah es instrucción, no ley. Solo se usa ley porque la, la, el entendimiento de los judíos, Dios viene de los judíos, es que esto era ley, estos son códigos, estos son reglas. Pero la palabra que Dios usó siempre en hebreo quiere decir instrucción. Siempre es instrucción. Cualquier ley, incluso la ley de cualquier ciudad, son instrucciones. El, el propósito de toda ley es instrucción. The purpose of any law and every law is instruction. Even your city laws, your governmental laws, you know, Congress, uh, Constitution, all the laws there are in the land, their purpose is educational. It isn't just, it isn't... Uh, Just that obeisance, it isn't the purpose. The purpose is to educate people how to live and be in peace. That's the purpose of the law. You want to look at it, you look at it from a, a, a criminal perspective, then the law is there to put you into jail. You better not break it. You see, that, that's a, a perspective that you have. But in actuality, the law is made to instruct the population. So that the population learns to live in harmony. What is right and what is wrong? Simple. It's a learning tool. Es una es para enseñar al público qué es bueno y qué es malo. 
Así mismo el propósito de Torah. Aún Pablo lo dice. Sin Torah, ¿cómo vamos a ver? Sin la ley, ¿cómo se sabe el pecado? ¿Cómo se conoce? Yo aprendí por la ley. ¿Tú no entiendes? Es instrucción. Sí, la gente no entiende. Es que ese es el problema. <laughs> so there's the problems that the people not understand what the purpose of the law is. It's always instruction. That's why Torah is instruction. All right. So, but then God is saying that this covenant is not according, not in agreement with the first covenant. Okay. Now, how is it not the same? Because if the law of God, the instructions of God are the same, how is this not the same? Or what is different then? Okay? Vamos a aceptar que la ley de Dios no ha cambiado. Let us accept that the law of God has not changed. Because it's not talking about law here, right? It's talking about the pact, the agreement, the covenant. No está hablando aquí de ley, está hablando del, del convenio, del, del pacto. Okay? All right. So, how do you know what is the difference? Again, by the evidence. God provides evidence. And that evidence will show you something else true, another truth. But we'll, we'll look at it. Let's look at the evidence. Because the problem here is that God provides evidence, but people don't realize that it's evidence. It is actual evidence. Dios está proveyendo aquí evidencia, pero que la gente no está reconociendo que es evidencia. Pero vamos a verlo. No de acuerdo al pacto que hice con sus padres. In the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. So, the basic issue is that that first covenant, okay, is the agreement that they had with God and that God had with them. That agreement, if you look at Exodus 19.3, what was the agreement? That if you hearken unto my voice, my what? My voice. What was his voice telling them? Instruction. Si ustedes oyeren mi voz, obedecieran mi voz. ¿Qué, el, qué contenía la voz de Dios? Sus instrucciones, su Torah. El, el pacto tiene que ver con guardar su Torah. Sus instrucciones. So the covenant was to keep his instructions. Look at it again. Vamos a verlo otra vez. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, obedecer mi voz, obey my voice. What is he speaking? He's telling them and he's going to tell them what? The Ten Commandments. The law is starting right here, right? If you obey my voice and keep the agreement y, y preservar y guardar el pacto, Then you will be a peculiar treasure. You, you, are you understanding? So you see que el, el guardar el pacto e involucra obedeciendo Torah. Okay? Not according to the covenant, to the agreement I made with their fathers. No de acuerdo a ese pacto. So, in the bottom line is that that whole agreement, including Torah, obeying his voice, has been changed. Not the law. The law doesn't change. The agreement has changed. And again, we're going to see the character, uh, the character of that chain. Vamos a ver el carácter de ese eh, cambio. Now, why does God have to change the old covenant? ¿Por qué Dios tenía que cambiar el primer eh, pacto? Con sus instrucciones, con su Torah. 
ese de acuerdo. ¿Y qué era de acuerdo? I mean, what was the agreement? Look at it again. Be careful here. Uh, you, know, you guys have to be careful and, and see what God is saying. Ustedes tienen que tener cuidado y oír lo que Dios dice. No de acuerdo al primer acuerdo. ¿Qué fue el primer acuerdo? No, no guardar mi acuerdo. ¿Cuál era? Obedecer mi voz. It was to obey my voice. It was, of course, the first pact, the first covenant. You had to keep it. He don't want you to break it. But that's not what the covenant is. You know, you don't make a contract that says, don't break this contract. So, but, but what are we supposed to do? Don't break the contract. What am I supposed to do in the contract? Don't break the contract. That's what these guys think. Eh, estos judíos, estos eh, raíces hebreos, creen que el contrato, el acuerdo es no romper el contrato. No romper el contrato. No romper el pacto. No romper el pacto. ¿Qué debemos de hacer? No romper el pacto. Eso no es el pacto. <laughs> That's not the covenant. The covenant is obey my voice. Aquí dice la escritura lo que era el primer pacto era obedecer mi voz, mis instrucciones. Obedece las. See, God is saying obey my voice. I'm giving you these instructions. Obey them. That was the context of the first covenant which they break el contexto del primer man, del primer eh, compacto que violaron ellos era obedecer mi voz okay, you, you, do you understand that? very clear which they break So the result, now look at what God is saying. Now, you see, give God some credit here. Give God some credit. See, God is saying that they broke the covenant. Okay? They could not obey his voice. Indeed. No obedecieron su voz. Eso es lo que Dios está diciendo. So, ¿y qué es la respuesta de Dios a eso? No podían obedecer mi ley, obedecer mi Torah, right? Ellos no podían obedecer mi Torah. They could not follow his Torah. They could not follow the law. Why? Because it was his voice. Because they could not obey his voice. They did not obey his voice. And therefore, they broke his covenant. No podían obedecer su voz. Y por eso rompieron, violaron su pacto. ¿Quién, ¿Quién también no obedeció la voz de Dios? Who also did not uh, uh, obey the voice of God? Let's give you a second. Right? That's why we start at the beginning so that we can have understanding. Por eso empezamos desde el principio para que haya entendimiento. ¿Quién también no obedeció lo que Dios dijo? Well, who also did not obey what God said? Adam and Eve. Adán y Eva. Okay? So you have Adam and Eve. God told them, don't do this. They do that. Adán, le dijo a Adán, Dios, no haga esto. Y eso mismo hizo. Entonces tenemos Israel. Then we go to Israel. God tells them, don't do this, do that. And they also break the covenant. Y así que Dios dijo a ellos, no haga esto, no haga otro. A Israel. Y rompen otra vez. Y rompen y violan su pacto. Do you see a pattern? Do you need more examples? <laughs> ¿Usted está viendo un patrón ahí? ¿Necesitamos más ejemplos? So what does God, how does God fix this? ¿Cómo es que Dios arregla este problema? Because he fixes it. He says, I will make a new covenant. Yo voy a hacer un nuevo pacto. No como aquel pacto. So I'm not making it according to the covenant that I made with the fathers. So what was 
the character of the covenant of the covenant they made with the fathers. ¿Qué fue el carácter del pacto que hice con sus padres? No haga esto y haga esto, aquello. Don't you see that the covenant was the character that is different is that now God is not telling you do this and don't do that. And this, I will, will prove it right here. Y eso lo vamos a probar aquí. Evidencia. Again, the evidence. Okay, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Pero esto será el pacto que haré con la casa de Israel. Después de aquellos días, dice el Señor. After those days, saith the Lord. I, look at it very carefully. I know these words may be hard words for you to understand. Yo entiendo que estas palabras pueden ser durísimo para comprenderla, pero suavemente. Y yo no estoy siendo eh, arrogante. Es que yo no, este que los hebreos raíces siempre niegan lo que dice aquí es muy claro. Por favor, pon atención. Yo. I read it in your Bible. Léelo en tu Biblia. No, no cree esta Biblia aquí. No cree. Duda, dúdalo, léelo en su Biblia, <laughs> léelo en hebreo, en el contexto hebreo, por favor, please read it in your Hebrew context, do not believe the Bible that you see here, please, do not doubt it, doubt it, please, Lord have mercy, doubt it, read it in Hebrew, léelo en hebreo, yo, yo, <laughs> Yo, I'm having fun with this. Yes, sorry. I. 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 Not other people. Not other, not churches. Not religious beliefs. Not teachers on videos. I. I. Huh? I will put my law in their inward parts. Not that you will hear it from other people telling you that you're supposed to keep the Sabbath. You are supposed to do this. You are supposed to keep the feast. No es oyendo a otra persona diciendo que está supuesto guardar la fiesta. Tú estás supuesto a guardar el Shabbat. Tú estás supuesto a obedecer el Torah. Yo. 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 I. 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 I'm sorry. I'm repeating this over and over and over again. But I, we need to find out how many times it takes for you to read what it says in whatever language you understand so that you can understand that it's not, you're not supposed to do things because other people tell you, because you heard a video, Jim Staley, so, so, and so what? You're not supposed to be following the uh, obeisance Uh, dictated by other people uh, telling you that you're supposed to do this law and that law and coast law. Usted no está supuesto estar siguiendo lo que dicen otra gente eh, que tiene que obedecer esta ley, el otro ley y la, y la lechuga esa que se hace con la cremita que me encanta tanto. Eh, no, no, no la lechuga de, de what do you call that? De, de repollo, oh I love that santo Dios, mm, don't fry chicken man, that's a good thing, but anyway listen, it's I will not Jim Staley I gotta mention it, because I oh, I, you know, it was a Jim Staley video that I saw that got me onto the truth <laughs> baby, you're still not in the truth, let me tell you what Jehovah says, how about that, but uh, is Jehovah greater than Jim Staley I hope so 
Yo creo que más que Jim Staley es Jehová. Y Jehová dice yo, no Jim Staley, yo, santo, alábalo si puede. Praise him if you can. ¿Sí? I will put my law, not Jim Staley. See, all of those people, Jim Staley, Adventist, or whatever have you, and anyone in the Hebrew Roots Movement, when you go and you tell somebody that they're wrong, they are not keeping Sabbath, they are not following the law, you are breaking the plan of God. You are the one who is against the new covenant of Yahweh. You are the one in opposition to Jehovah. Tú eres el que te hace enemigo a Dios. Con promover el primer pacto. Diciendo a otros que deben de obedecer la ley. Porque eso ya no es la realidad. No es la verdad. Ok. God says I will. And anyone who is telling you to do that is against the work of God. They are working against God. I'm going to show you now. So hold on to your seatbelt because this is going to get very serious in a moment. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it. I will write it in their heart. You don't have to tell them what the law of God is. It will be written in their hearts. What is the heart? ¿Qué es el corazón? Va a ser escrito en el corazón. ¿Qué es el corazón? El corazón es los deseos. Que ellos desean. You, don't you see what God has done? No ve lo que Dios está haciendo. Que Dios está poniéndolo en su deseo. No hay que estar diciendo a ellos haga esto o haga lo otro. Dios lo va a poner en el corazón. Van a desear cumplir. Very important. Van a desear cumplir la voluntad de Dios. They're going to desire to fulfill the will of God okay because the difference what is the difference between this and the first covenant God is not telling they are not being told la diferencia que Dios no está diciendo y Dios no está y otros no lo están diciendo eso es la diferencia yet that's exactly what these people are doing Now, the result of not being told to follow the law and to keep the Sabbath, the resultado de no eh, ser eh, dicho o, o, o que no se le dice a uno que debe de seguir la ley, obedecer el Shabbat y seguir las fiestas o guardarlas, es que ese resultado que es and will be their God. And they shall be my people. So, el resultado de no oír y no hacer el Shabbat y no eh, cumplir la ley porque otros te lo dijeron. ¿Sí? Y tú estás siguiendo lo que otros hacen. Right? El resultado de no hacerlo así. Y dejar que Dios lo pone en su corazón y lo, eh, y lo escribe en su corazón y lo pone en su mente. Es que entonces tú serás pueblo de Dios. Y Dios será tu Dios. Eso es el resultado. Si no es así, no Dios no es tu Dios y tú no eres gente de Dios o pueblo de Dios. So if it doesn't happen this way, it's going to get very serious. I told you, get your tissue. Busca su toallita, su, su panuelo, punuelo, se dice. No, nunca usé esa palabra mucho. Su punuelo, se dice, ¿verdad? Un, algo para secarte las lágrimas. Porque sencillamente que si tú, si tú no recibes la ley por parte de Dios directamente en su mente y que Dios lo escriba en su corazón si así fue que no recibiste 
Si así fue que, que no recibiste, o sea, que si no recibiste este sentir de ir y, y cumplir la ley y guardar el sábado, porque usted lo escuchó a otro que te lo enseñó y otro diciendo y el video de este y el video de aquello diciendo ustedes tienen que obedecer el Shabbat tienen que obedecer la ley si eso fue la manera que hoy día tú estás observando estas cosas Dios no es tu Dios de acuerdo a Jeremías 31, 33 y no eres pueblo de Dios de acuerdo a la palabra de Dios. According to the word of God, you are not the children of God. You are not, you don't belong to God. You do not know God. According to Jeremiah 31, 33, if you are keeping Shabbat today, which is the Sabbath uh, teaching that we have today, if you're keeping Shabbat because you were instructed to do so, you are not a child of God. You are Do not know God. And you are not the people of God. Tú no eres pueblo de Dios. Okay? Because you have chosen to follow a broken pact. A broken covenant. Which God has rejected. It, it's no good. But that's the way you came to know Shabbat. That's the way you came to know the law. That's the way you came to know the feasts. Esa es la manera que tú aprendiste el Shabbat, la ley y la fiesta, por otro, porque otro te lo enseñó. Pero eso no es el nuevo pacto. Ese pacto es del viejo, el primer pacto que está violado y que no trabajó. No trabajó con Adán, no trabajó con Israel. It didn't work with Adam, it didn't work with Israel. God made a new a new covenant. Now, you say, well, that's your interpretation, pastor. No, it isn't. Never think that when I teach you something, it is my interpretation. Let us continue to read. Okay, you see? I get you guys all the time. Yo aquí te tengo bien agarradito cada vez, mijo. And look at what Yahweh says. Esta es la evidencia. 34. And they shall teach no more. Listen again. Ah, otra vez. Let's go. Y no enseñarán más. Y no se enseñarán más. Léelo. 34. Vamos. Ponle el panuelo. Usa ese panuelo. No, no deja lágrimas caer sobre la, las hojas. Don't let the tears drop on the Bible. Read it in your Bible. And they shall teach no more. Every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. Right? No, no enseñará uno a otro que conozca a Dios. Of course, in your Hebrew context, what does that mean? It means that they're not telling you to obey this and obey that. See? Y no están diciendo en el contexto hebreo, conocer al Señor es, 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 you know, haciendo lo que el Señor manda. Sencillamente. Vivir en el Señor. Vivir uh, de acuerdo a la voluntad de Dios. Y ninguno enseñará a su hermano esto. Ninguno. ¿Por qué? Porque cada uno me conocerá desde el más pequeño hasta el más grande. ¿Cómo puede ser? Don't you see what God is saying? How can it be that the, the least, the smallest among them, it means the, the, the least educated among them, el menos enseñado, el menos, el menos crecido, el, men, el, el menos que entiende, el menos que tiene tiempo en Dios, en, en los caminos de Dios, va, va a ser igualmente como el que más tiene. 
en el viejo pacto tenían que aprender las cosas con tiempo estas cosas o sea, hay que entender toda coge tiempo y you know what I'm talking about you Hebrew roots guys you know what I'm saying ustedes saben lo que estoy diciendo en los raíces hebreas tú tienes que estudiar toda eso es un proceso tienen que aprender muchas cosas muchas clases mucho estudio tú entiendes lo que estoy diciendo ¿verdad? pero eso no es lo que Dios está diciendo But that's not what God is saying here. Evidence. La evidencia señala que ustedes no tienen el nuevo pacto. Plain and simple. You know, uh, you, you guys are demonstrative of the fact that you have, you don't live in the new covenant. Because you have to be teaching each other and telling each other how to keep the Shabbat, that we're supposed to be keeping the Shabbat, that uh, you have to keep the feast. You're not keeping the feast. The feasts are done this way. We have to teach you how the feasts are done, how to do this, how to do that. You know it. You know that you're, you're in a constant deluge of Jewish information because you're trying to be Jewish. Están tratando de ser judío. Están tratando de ser el primer uh, pacto. You guys are trying to do the first covenant. And God is saying, that's not my plan. Y Dios está diciendo, no es mi plan. So if you're doing that today, You have to realize that you're not doing what God wants you to do. You're fighting against God's plan. Usted está peleando contra Dios y contra el plan de Dios. Because they taught you all this garbage that's not the evidence against the Christian church. And all God is talking about is... The Christian Church. Y lo que Dios está hablando aquí es de la iglesia cristiana. Porque aunque este pacto es para Israel, even though this covenant is for Israel, but remember, why? Because they messed up the first one. It doesn't mean that all the earth isn't mine. No quiere decir que toda la tierra no es mía. Did you understand that? That's why the evidence of the priests of the world is in the Christian church. Por eso la evidencia de los sacerdotes de todo el mundo es en la iglesia cristiana. And all we see here is the Christian church not saying, because the Christian church doesn't tell you to keep Sabbath. The Christian church doesn't tell you to keep this feast. La iglesia cristiana no te dice guardar el sábado. La iglesia cristiana no te dice eh, guardar la fiesta. I mean, I, I mean if, you, if, you, if you don't include the Adventist. Si no incluye the Adventist. <laughs> Porque la iglesia cristiana está cumpliendo con el hecho que son los hijos de Dios por fe. Punto. Porque la obra es de Dios, de escribir y de poner. See, the Christian church is teaching that the work of salvation belongs to God, Jehovah. Because it's up to Jehovah to put into the mind and to write in the heart. So that's why you don't see the Christian church talking about Sabbath, unless, unless it's a church that doesn't understand. That's the only church that would tell you that would be a Christian and would tell you to keep the Sabbath. It's a church that doesn't have understanding. Es una iglesia que no tiene entendimiento la cristiana que te dice que hay que obedecer el Shabbat. Porque también esa iglesia se hace enemigo de lo que Jehová está haciendo con Jeremías 33 y 31, 33 y 34. Because even that Christian church would be an enemy of, of God's plan here in Jeremiah 31, 33, 34. That church is actually against what God is doing. 
any church that teaches the Shabbat. In other words, too, that you are supposed to keep the Shabbat in the traditional way. Well, your church teaches Shabbat. Huh? I'm teaching the Shabbat. Okay? And if you listen to the teachings here, you realize that I'm teaching the real Shabbat, the true Shabbat which isn't what people are doing today on Shabbat. That's not what they're doing. They're, they're teaching the first covenant. Lo que están en la iglesia hoy día, en Shabbat, en sus templos, lo que sea, la mayoría están enseñando el primer pacto. Estos están haciendo lo que Dios no quiere que se haga. They're doing things according to the in accordance to the covenant that God made with their fathers, with the with Israel's fathers in the day he took them by the hand, you see. Los que están enseñando hoy día Shabbat, que hay que seguir el Shabbat, y esas iglesias, aunque sean cristianas, que están observando Shabbat hoy, están de acuerdo al pacto que Dios hizo con los padres de Israel en el día que los sacó por la mano de la tierra de Egipto. Ellos están haciendo en oposición a lo que dice aquí. So they're, they're doing in opposition to what God is doing or has said that he's doing over here. Okay. See, who's going to be watching this teaching for three hours? Incredible, right? ¿Quién va a ver esta enseñanza por tres horas? Because now I'm looking, I've been here for three hours in this class. That's one hour more, but God has given me strength. Because usually at two hours, my voice gives. But today, he's giving me strength to do this class. Praise God. Praise the Jehovah. Alabado sea Dios. Porque siempre mi voz se va en dos horas. Dos horas es mi límite, pero esta no hoy. Esta verdad, Dios me está, oh my goodness, you give me that voice, boy. And you can hear that my voice was cracking before, right? <clears throat> so that is the reality. This is the evidence. Esto es la evidencia de la escritura. See? So you can choose to ignore the evidence. And then you 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 risk what you're risking. Let me show you what. Uh, let let me before I go there to finish, and I'll be finishing with that. Um, so basically, I want to focus a little bit here on the difference. Remember what the difference was, right? Recuerda la diferencia. The new covenant is not what. It's not God speaking to for you to obey. That's the difference. Compare. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Yo escribiré mi ley en su mente, pondré mi ley en su mente y lo escribiré en sus corazones. Compara con Éxodo. Si obedecieras mi voz. ¿Sí? So when you compare it to the Exodus 19.3, the instruction Torah God says, if ye will obey my voice. See the difference? So the difference was that the requirement was that the people obey God. You have See, that's what God said. We have to obey it, the law. We have to obey what God said. See that? And the difference in the new way is that God puts it in our heart and in our mind. So it's not an issue of obeisance. It's simply an issue of realization, manifestation. So, la diferencia que cuando Dios escribe en su corazón y en su mente, lo pone, es diferente que obedecer lo que fue dicho. Porque lo que es ahora es manifestar, manifestar la realidad de ellos. So what God is now looking at or producing in man is the manifestation of the reality of the purpose for which he gave the law in the first place. 
So I see que es la realización, which is what? It's understanding. It's what it is. Right? He's talking about the mind. And then the desires in the heart. I see que what, what's the formulation? What's the process? It's called understanding. It's called learning. I see, but before it was just obedience. There's no learning there. There's very low level learning, if anything. But the requirement always is, oh, but you got to obey. You, you don't have to understand. Just obey. Okay? That if you're an Adventist and you heard someone teach you that, I'm the guy that originally said it. And the executive missions pre vice president of the seven-day Adventist t took it from me. Okay? So I'm the original guy who said that. But now you hear it in context. What they didn't tell you because all they did was abuse you. Así que <clears throat> el que oyó ese refrán en la iglesia mentita de que donde no se sabe, donde no hay entendimiento, pues hay que obedecer. Esa frase, yo soy el originador de ello. Eso se lo dije al vicepresidente de misiones de los adventistas. Y él lo cogió de mí. Ok. Y, pero ahora oyes en el contexto verdadero. Eso era un abuso, lo que él hizo. So I'm just letting you know. What, who you're looking at here is someone who actually impacted the Seven Day Adventist Church. Okay? But they took my words out of context. But sacaron mis palabras de contexto. Right? Because here, obeisance was part of the first covenant. La obediencia era parte del primer pacto. Porque era, so, era algo dicho por Dios que la gente tenía que obedecer. How else? Hay que había obedecerla. Okay, so the nature, what I'm trying to point to is that there's a difference in when you're told, don't do this. You have to do that. There's a difference in just living with understanding. Hay una diferencia. So hay, hay diferencia in, in there's a, there is a difference when you have understanding as opposed to just following instructions or, or, or orders, obeying them, a big difference. So, hay una gran diferencia entre seguir las instrucciones por la obediencia y sencillamente vivir su vida, you know, eh, de acuerdo a su mente y su corazón. Hay una gran diferencia. Ahora, the one who's following the instruction line by line, is going to look at the one just living his life and will always say, you're not doing this. This is the way he's that one, two, three, right? That criticism, let me, let me inform you because see, when you don't get educated, you, you will fall into this trap all the time. Cuando tú no eres educado, usted siempre va a caer en este trampa siempre. A little bit because the, the throat is, is hitting it now. <clears throat> Let me give you from the perspective of mu music. Dame usar un ejemplo de la música, entre la música. Yo soy compositor. I'm a composer of music, okay? De música orquestral. I can compose orchestral pieces, okay? Orchestra, an orchestra, drum, bum, 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 and trompeta, pa, 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 you know, and, y violines y alpa y, y, y todo lo demás, right? Yo puedo hacer eso y crear música de la, esa forma magna, ok? Yo puedo hacer, yo, yo conozco hacerlo y fui enseñado en eso también. So I was uh, given some instruction in creating orchestral pieces and whatnot. But anyway, in, so in, in, in the process, I learned a truth. En, en el proceso aprendí una gran verdad. Y es que cuando empecé el proceso, me enseñaron el canon. Now, y eso es tradicional en la música. Esto ha sido cierto por todas las épocas cuando eh, desde la música escrita que existía, el canon era lo principal y lo primero, primordial, lo primero que se enseñaba. 
So everyone learning music throughout all history had to learn the canon as one of the first things you learn. You, you first learn the canon. What is the canon? Canon means rule. So that's how people start to learn. A musician and a musical a composer begins to learn how to write music and how to compose music. Because the first thing is that you have to learn the succession of notes. Okay, and, and be able to make music and make it sound good. So the whole point of the canon was to change the notes but have everything sound great still. That's the really it's the exercise of making music beautiful and maintaining its beauty. That is the main purpose of the canon. So el canon, el, el principal propósito es, es de cambiar las notas y mantener armonía. Es la, la, la enseñanza básica del canon. Y por eso es importante que todo estudiante de música aprenda el canon. Okay? Son las reglas. Now, when you... When, and what is the canon? I'm not going to play one for you an example, but I'll, I'll hum it. It's the canon you've all heard of. You've heard, you, you all heard the canon one way or another. And basically, it's, it sounds something like this. Dun, 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 right? So that would be a beginning of a canon. It just simply goes down, you know, the, the scale. It follows the scale. It will go down, 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 down. It would follow very close notes. It won't be jumping too much. Uh, again, because it's training the student to uh, keep the music tight, keep it in harmony, and make it interesting. Forces them to try to make something interesting while maintaining the structure, the tightness, the whole cohesiveness of harmony with uh, the melody. Y eso enseña al estudiante a componer con una estructura firme y apretadita, ¿no? Con la melodía y la armonía muy, muy concentrada, muy enfocada, disciplinada. Y eso es propósito del canon. Pero... Todo estudiante aprende que eso no es la música. Como se oye los grandes maestros de música, no están haciendo así. No siempre. So, you know that as a music listener, and a, obviously a student of music, that all the great composers never sat down and did all their pieces like that. They obviously did that when they were learning, but after they learned, they did not do that. That wasn't the end or the purpose of learning the rules. See? So you get you know what I'm getting to. The purpose was to become a master, was to understand the rules and then break those rules. Now it's not breaking the rules in terms of the sin. It's just simply that the purpose of the rule was for you to learn how to make music. Then now, go and make music. Make beautiful music. Because now you know what you're doing when you go and jump from here to there, and then you change the key signature, and then you change the rhythm, and then you go and go, boy, go. But you know how to make music. Once you jump and flip and do the backflip, you know how to make it work. See? You become a master of music. Usted viene a conocer la música bien ahora y ahora tú puedes escribir y brincar y doblar y hacer esto y lo otro y hacer música bella y preciosa donde quiera que tú vayas porque tú sabes las reglas. Las reglas lo aprendiste, pero no para quedarte en las reglas, sino para crear la música bella y preciosa. Eso es lo que no está entendiendo la gente, que las reglas... Las reglas, lo dicho por Dios, 
era instrucciones, pero las instrucciones tienen fin de entendimiento para que uno sea maestro, que uno sea ya es hábil. Y que la gente diga, oye, ¿qué diferencia hay entre el canon? Eso es la ley. La, eso es ley. El canon es ley. The, the canon is law. The law is da, 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 da. Now, so, so what's the difference between the law and the music, ladies and gentlemen? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre la ley y la música? See, when, when, when the music is in your heart and in your mind, what is the difference? Cuando la música, las reglas ya están en su mente y su corazón. When the law is in your mind and in your heart, what is the difference? The difference is the same difference between the canon, da, 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 and music. Y la música. Esa es la diferencia. That is what God was doing. Taking it at, 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 out of being a da, da, da. And making it real in the lives of his people. Praise God. Haciendo la, su ley real en la, en la vida de su pueblo. Y eso es música, mijo. You know, estoy diciendo que eh, entonces viene la libertad. Pero la música es bella. Es lindo. Porque está de acuerdo. ¿Sí? Está basado en la ley, en el canon. You guys have to understand. That's why, that's the difference. That's why God made it a new covenant. And that covenant is different in that aspect. Y es diferente en ese aspecto. If you don't know music, like my example, see? If you're a composer, you would you know what I'm talking about. Si tú eres un compositor, eh, usted entiende lo que dije ahora. Usted entiende, porque tú conoces, no, no solamente sabe la teoría, sino eh, usted pasó por la experiencia. Usted sabe lo que estoy diciendo y puede relacionar. And you can relate to what I'm teaching here. The realization of what even God is doing. Because when you read it, you'll say, well, that's what God is doing. But, but most people who insist on the first covenant, they don't have that experience. They don't have that knowledge. They really no tienen la experiencia ni el conocimiento que yo tengo. O sea, una persona que, tiene, que ha estudiado la música para poder realizar. Oh, esto es lo que Dios está haciendo. Because you begin to see that it's an issue of understanding here. That's what God did. He, he took it out of, uh, out of obeisance and put it into understanding. And there are also going to be differences. Manifest differences. Y va a haber diferencia manifiesta entre una persona que sigue regla y una persona que es maestro. Somebody following the rules to bake a cake. As opposed to a, a cook, a chef, who has his masterful in cake and baking cakes. There's a difference between those two cakes there. Hay una diferencia entre esos dos bicochitos. Desde el profesional y de uno que sigue las reglas, la ley. Va a haber una diferencia. ¿Sí? So that, that's the thing. And then, el, el que sigue la, la regla, dice, oh, pero tú estás echando, estás echando mucha azúcar, que esa otra cosa que estás echando, eso no es lo que dice la instrucción. <laughs> yo soy profesional. <laughs> yo, yo sé lo que estoy haciendo. You know? So again, you see, that, that's the difference. And it's true about in everything in life. That when you're a professional, you're a master, You're doing things that the, um, the guy following the rules says, why are you doing that? How is it you do, you're doing that? And, uh, you know, 
you're not following these rules or you're not doing it this way. You say, I am doing it. You just, you're not realizing this is just a guide. See, but where the mastery comes in is what, and what I'm doing. But you have to do that for you. You have to learn. That's how you learn. You follow the rules. But once you know, then you know. See? Así que es, ese es el, el punto. La gente no está entendiendo. Uh, they, they're not understanding that God is giving in basic instructions. And they're not taking it as instructions. They're taking it as a law. And that's it. But then God is saying, well, listen, I have a new covenant. If you don't understand anything, can you understand that I will put in their hearts, in their inners, and write on their hearts? Can't you understand that simplicity? Because that's pretty simple language. Es sencillo lo que Dios está diciendo, que yo pondré en su mente y escribiré en su corazón. Eso es sencillo, eso es lenguaje sencillo. That's it. All right. So I wanted you to make sure that you guys have that clear. Okay. But then let's look at the, to finish. Let's look at the let's look at uh, Galatians. I'm putting here something is probably not even there. <laughs> I know it's in Galatians, but I put in a, a chapter and verse that, uh, and it's probably I misspelled Galatians for two T's. Lupus Edote in Galatians. So, nah. all right. So let's look for. Okay, Galatians 5.4. Vamos a ver Galata, Galata 5.4. And let's actually see the whole chapter. Galatians 5. It says here, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ remember the liberty of, of the musician who knows what they're doing the liberty of the chef who knows how to bake that cake and make it all so good right stay therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free you know manténgase en la libertad del, del maestro del, del cocinero profesional y que sabe la, la ley, sabe el canon, pero él sabe hacerlo bien, dulce, bien hecho, que aunque ya después de empezar con la ley, con las reglas, él eh, ya entiende el cocinar, es una ciencia y una arte. Therefore the liberty with Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again, y no volvéis. Otra vez al yugo de, eh, de eh, ¿cómo se dice eso? De esclavitud. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you. Now this is, this deserves another hour or two, which I can't give because my throat is, is going to give. No puedo dar aquí otra hora. But look at what he says. Remember, 
the main premise, and this reminds me of where I wanted to go next, yes. It was, what is it to be in Israel? What is it to be Israel? Que es ser Israel? Okay? The main, one of the main things of being Israel was to be circumcised. See, because that's not, that, that's the physical reality. What is the physical reality of Israel? Get circumcised. En la realidad física de Israel era ser circuncidado para ser parte de Israel. You had to get circumcised. That's how you show that you were Israel, that you joined with the people of God. You had to get circumcised. Okay? So, Um, because uh, the, the Hebrew roots say, well, we, we're Israel. We're Israel. So we, we're supposed to, and you're not supposed to interpret things spiritually, right? No estamos supuesto interpretar la cosa espiritualmente. So la circuncisión es algo físico y no se puede interpretar físico. Entonces tenemos que hacer la circuncisión. If you are Israel, Hebrew roots or otherwise, you have to get circumcised. Because you can't interpret scripture spiritually. So circumcision, it's not supposed to be taken spiritually, but physically. Because that was the requirement in order for you to become Israel. La requisito para usted ser Israel era ser circuncidado. Look at what Paul says. So the rule is for you to be circumcised. I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Israel, in fact, Christ shall profit you nothing. Si eres circuncidado, Cristo no te aprovechará en nada. En nada. See, but the, the covenant requires you to be circumcised. El pacto requiere que tú seas circuncidado. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. El que se circuncida es deudor a toda la ley. Tiene que cumplir toda la ley física. You have to do the whole law, which includes Sabbath. Uh, Exodus 20 verse 8 You must uh, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy To keep it holy, right? So you have, that is part of You have to be circumcised And because of that, because you're Israel You have to keep the Shabbat Toda la ley Tiene que observar toda la ley Ser circuncidado Cuatro For Christ is become of no effect unto you. Porque Cristo a ti no te aproveche nada. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Ustedes se han caído de la gracia. Eran pentecostal, pero han caído de la gracia. Eran luteranos. Pero han caído de la gracia. Eran presbiterianos, bautistas, pero han caído de la gracia. Eran católicos, pero han caído de la gracia. Punto. You know, you guys were Catholic, you were Lutheran, you were Presbyterian, you were Pentecostal, you were Baptist, but now you have fallen from grace because you have gone to obey the voice of the Lord and keep the covenant that's why you have fallen now from grace Christ is of no effect for you Cristo no tiene efecto contigo because you are obeying the Sabbath law Christ is of no effect to you because you believe that you have to keep the Sabbath porque tú crees que tú tienes que guardar el Shabbat And then Christ means nothing to you. Why? Why is it? Because, because it is now by faith. It is not is I that put it in your mind. I write it in your heart. Not that you follow what was told 
O spoken, my voice indeed. God is telling you, you do not go by my voice indeed. In terms of the law. That covenant is broken. No good. Nada. That's it. Finito. Punto. Caput. That's what God is t- telling you. You saw it in Jeremiah. And now you hear Paul telling you again. Because Paul understood. For we through the Spirit wait. For the hope of righteousness by faith. Porque nosotros por el Espíritu esperamos en la esperanza de la justicia por la fe, no por las obras de la ley, no por la ley, no por guardar el Shabbat, not by keeping the Sabbath, by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision, being Israel or not, does not approve of it, does not avail of anything, nor uncircumcision. See, so it doesn't matter if you are Israel or not, circumcised or not, because to be Israel, you have to be circumcised. But Paul is saying that that doesn't mean anything, because it's not by Israel anymore. No es por Israel físico. It's not by physical Israel anymore. What is it? It's by faith. Es por la fe. Here becomes the, the issue now, and I'm going to challenge every Hebrew Roots guy, uh, person listening to me. Aquí es el desafío para cada persona hebrea, raíces hebrea. Muéstranos el ADN. Show the DNA. We have the signs. Ya está la ciencia. Ya tenemos la tecnología. We now have the technology for you to prove if you are Israel or not. Hoy tenemos la tecnología para tú probar si eres Israel o no. So show the evidence. Go by the evidence. We have it. Go by it. Vámonos con la evidencia. Ya lo tenemos. Demuestra la evidencia que tú eres Israel. La mayoría de personas que están en los raíces hebreas están por la fe. (laughs) <laughs> porque no tienen evidencias ni cuando yo le digo le desafío ni buscan la evidencia so they need to look for the evidence when I challenge them on the DNA issue they don't look for it so then you are Israel by faith entonces son Israel por fe well if you are Israel by faith si son Israel por fe Entonces no es la circuncisión. Porque como Pablo dice, tú estás de acuerdo con Pablo. You are in agreement with Paul that it is by faith. It is no, it's not by anything else. Not by blood and not by DNA. It is simply by faith. Because even, what does the circumcision mean? It's meaning by blood. By family relation, we are Israel. But Paul is saying no. No longer. The circumcision doesn't mean anything. Becoming Israel physically doesn't mean anything. It doesn't help you. You need to be Israel by faith. Necesitamos ser Israel por la fe. So that, that means that everything, circum, circumcision is the law. La circuncisión es por la ley física. Pero él dice que ya no es necesario la circuncisión. Porque tú, cuando tú vienes a ser Israel por la fe, which is what I'm saying, that the Hebrew roots are right in this aspect, that you do become Israel. But Israel by faith. And that means that the law is also by faith, the fulfillment thereof. Quiere decir que también si tú eres Israel por la fe, entonces quiere decir también que la ley, circuncisión, 
es por fe no por la obra de la ley sino por fe y esto obra por el amor o sea que ahora en el, en el primer pacto la ley se obraba por hecho obedecer pero ahora la fe se demuestra en el amor no en las obras de la fe as digo en las obras de la ley so what we see here is that now we do not do the obedience to the law what we do is have faith which worketh by love here it goes oh 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 read it there get your napkin ready your handkerchief because faith but by faith which worketh by love not by works by love por la fe que obra por amor eso es lo que se debe ver en los hijos de Dios amor no obras de la ley again why did Israel have to do the works of the law because they had to obey the law don't you see there was no other way until God made the new way the new covenant and now you don't manifest the works of the law anymore all you do is live by faith and manifest the love because that was always the plan of God Santo said Señor in, in the law you can't have the love Because it's always criticizing those who don't follow the law. And you see it all the time. Ustedes ven siempre que critican los que no hacen la ley. Se comparan con los que no hacen la ley. Esos son cristianos que no, no guarden el sábado. Nosotros guardamos el sábado. Eso es falta de amor. Eso es legalismo. Eso no es el amor. Santo es el Señor. So that is not love, ladies and gentlemen. That is judgment. You're being, that's prejudice. The Jews have prejudice against all the other Gentiles. Maybe all the Christian church. They hate them. Okay? We are the only ones with the Sabbath. We're keeping the Sabbath and we're following God's law. That's what this is. Arrogance and it's hatred. Okay? Then you have the Hebrew root. Same thing. Arrogance and hatred. And all the other Hebrew this and Hebrew that and wannabes. They all hate the Gentile. They hate the Christian church. Right? The bottom line is that the Christian church manifests the evidence that the scripture stipulates as for those who are in compliance with God's will and uh, those who are in the new covenant. It's only the Christian church that demonstrates those traits and follows in, uh, and are in harmony with God's plan under the new covenant. Only the Christian church. Because the other church, uh, you all guys, the Hebrew this and Hebrew that and Hebrew whatnot, all of you guys are breaking that new covenant. You're not in the new covenant. <clears throat> Todos los hebreos esto, hebreos lo otro, hebreos lo que sea, ninguno están en el pacto nuevo. Ninguno demuestran la evidencia de lo que obedecen a Dios de todos modos. So you have, as my voice is now, you know, I need rest, Pastor Rosado. Give yourself rest. I need to Shabbat now. But the evidence is resounding and voluminous. Voluminous. Right? It's astoundingly clear. By the evidence alone, the evidence that God describes what happens when you do the right thing, by the evidence alone, the all the Hebrew this and that are off the mark. Todos los hebreos esto lo otro son fuera de sí, fuera de la de, de, de donde deben estar. Y lo adventista o, o cualquier iglesia que promueve el Shabbat también está equivocada. So any church. Christian church also that promotes the Sabbath 
is also off the main teaching of scripture. Telling people they're supposed to keep the Sabbath is not a new covenant action. Absolutely not. And the Bible showed you, not my opinion. It's not my interpretation. It, God said it himself. Dios lo dijo a él mismo, no es mi interpretación ni mi opinión. And that's the end of the story. They can say all the things they want. They're so wrong. The Bible speaks against it very clearly. Yahweh is very clearly against that action. Now you choose what you're going to do. But if you were, like I say, if you were Christian, you better get back to Christ. Because the bottom line is, uh, <clears throat> Christ has become of no effect. You have broken away from Christ if you do anything according to the law today. Si tú haces cualquier cosa de acuerdo a la ley hoy, tú has desligado de, de Cristo. Tú no eres salvo. Tú no tienes la salvación. Tú no tienes a Dios. Tú puedes uh, invocar el nombre de Yahweh todo lo que quieres. Tú estás en desobediencia. Y no solamente eso. Sino que tú estás peleando contra Yahweh. You are also fighting against Yahweh and his plan. Because you're telling people to keep the Sabbath. Porque tú estás diciendo a la gente que hagan, eh, obedezcan la ley. Que guardan el sábado. El sábado. You're telling people to follow the law. You're telling people to follow the feast, to keep the feast. You're telling people to follow the feast, to keep the feast. And God is saying that it's not that way. <clears throat> that was the first covenant. That's fine. All the verses you have that say God said to do that, it's the first covenant which they break. That's it. Over. Done. Kaput. Eh, todos esos textos que tú tienes para defender ese, ese uh, postulación es del primer pacto que fue violado, que fue invalidado por Israel. Ya, punto, se terminó. And the last point, the very last point, and with this I finish, is that there's, you know, who are the Jews? ¿Quiénes son los judíos? ¿Quiénes son Israel? Who is Israel? Who were Israel? They were Gentiles. <laughs> Eran gentiles. It's come full circle, folks. I mean, <laughs> can, don't you understand? <laughs> Israel, God didn't make Israel. Israel was taken from Gentiles. Israel fue tomado de los gentiles. And Israel came back to the gentiles. And Israel ended up back with the Gentile because the whole the whole story is God is trying to save all the earth. Dios está salvando todo el mundo. Los gentiles que son Israel y Israel son los gentiles. Todos somos. Israel vino de los gentiles. You know, in the que no hay entendimiento. Ya, esta gente es increíble. So the the profundity, the, um, the, the great vast amount of understanding and clear evidence also in scripture is goes against the premise of the Hebrew Roots Movement. So after these three hours, almost four, I mean, this has been a pretty much a very uh, point by point um, coverage of the main reasons for the Hebrew Roots Movement of being the Hebrew Roots Movement and they're falling short um, simply um, you know you've seen the error you've seen the evidence that God places and where it lies and simply it's as clear as day any I, I've said enough, so it's all, it's all very clear. It's clear as day. So thank you guys for joining us today. Um, you know, again, I give very lengthy talks 
of biblical matters, but you have to understand that in the human perspective, uh, people, uh, you know, we're talking about thousands of years of understanding and teaching, of perspective that I have to dig through, you know, in a short amount of time. And this was a very profound teaching. Um, and uh, we just had to go there. We had to start from the beginning. And you had to just see everything, how it falls in place with the scripture. But most important, I think the most important thing you need to, you need to if you didn't catch it, go back in the video. I know it's a long time. But look for the evidence, the declaration of the evidences when things are right, when, 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 when the nation is doing the right thing and you see the evidence. God said this will be the result and look for the result. As they say, follow the money because that's the proof. Así que usted, si una cosa recuerde, busca la evidencia. Recuerda en el video que hablé de la evidencia que da Dios de que estos son bien correctos, o sea, que son correctos y los otros no son correctos. Sencillamente eh, hay un refrán en el gringo que dice sigue el dinero, busca y sigue el dinero porque ahí está la verdad. Y entonces aquí en la escritura usted ve qué es la verdad. Los que demuestran esta evidencia ellos están en la verdad. Los que no lo demuestren no están, no tienen la verdad. Y, y eso es, es tan claro, más claro que eso, no canta el gallo cuando dice otro refrán. Así que gracias por sintonizar, revisa bien este video, esos puntos son bien. En, en, uh, y nadie quiere debatir conmigo, ¿sí? I, I've made invitations uh, or reach out to have discussion, not even debates. No fue debate, yo invité a hacer una discusión, vamos, quiero hacer interrogación. I want to make some questions, I want to have some questions, and I just have you answer, that's all. I, I didn't want to debate, I just want to ask questions, and see what their answers are, and let them stand or fall on, upon their answer. No one has wanted to take that uh, invitation up. What are you afraid of? ¿Qué, qué es lo que temen ellos? de mis preguntas ¿Sí? so, it's, not, it's just like those organizations where you can't ask your own questions what is that brainwash right? esas organizaciones es como esa organización que no te dejan hacer tu propia pregunta tiene que hacer la pregunta que dice el libro se lava de, me, de mente eso es lo que pasa esta gente no quieren que yo le interrogo See, because they know that I know. That's why. Porque ellos saben que yo sé. Y no tienen respuestas. And they don't have the answers to the questions that I have. And then, why do you believe in what you believe? Entonces, ¿por qué creen en lo que creen? See, I have an answer for everything that I teach. And I've shown you why. Así que yo tengo respuesta para todo lo que yo enseño. Y le he enseñado aquí el porqué. Happy Shabbat Shalom. Have a peaceful sh Shabbat. All of those who are uh, in their Shabbat observance today. And see you guys next time. Y le veo el eh, eh, próximo. Dios le bendiga a todos. God bless you all. And that's that.